Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Sunday, President Obama informed Congress that he authorized U.S. military airstrikes in Iraq to help Iraqi citizens take back the Mosul Dam from the Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS. A White House statement said failure could threaten the lives of large numbers of civilians, threaten U.S. personnel and facilities. The statement called the operations limited and said they were done at the request of the Iraqi government. On Friday, Texas Governor Rick Perry was indicted by a grand jury for two counts of abuse of power and coercion. Perry said the indictments were politically motivated and unwarranted. The charges stem from Perry vetoing $7.5 million in funding for a branch of the Travis County District Attorney's Office. Critics allege that Perry vetoed as a way to push Democratic District Attorney Rosemary Lindbergh out of office. Now Perry faces 5 to 99 years in jail if convicted of the first-degree felony. Over the weekend, Bitcoin prices hit a month-long low of just above $480. Some speculate the price drop is due to investors engaging in manipulative investment tactics through the Bitfinex trading platform. Nonetheless, those who expect Bitcoin to continue to increase in price see the current dip as an excellent opportunity for buying. For those interested in adding to their portfolio, Brave New Books at 1904 Guadalupe Street in Austin is now host to a Bitcoin ATM where you can purchase Bitcoin in a safe and secure manner. To keep up with the latest in Bitcoin prices, visit thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 18th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. For ages, scientists have associated the Earth's cosmic location with a wide spectrum of interstellar phenomena. But a study from the International Astronomical Union says that not only is the Earth far from the most interesting part of the cosmos, but is in fact located in the lamest, least awesome part of the universe. We're billions of light years away from any supermassive black holes, interstellar explosions, or really anything even moderately cool. Our nebula just sucks so hard in comparison to some of the things out there. Not only is the planet Earth and its solar system, quote, basically the most boring region of the entire universe, but a number of irregularly shaped galaxies illuminated in the Hubble Ultra Deep Field prove to be infinitely cooler than any of the weak-ass, boring as phenomena occurring in the Milky Way. I mean, there's a black hole out there that weighs 21 billion solar masses, and it's 336 million light years away. Our black hole? It couldn't tear a mid-sized star apart. We're the cosmic equivalent of a f***ing cul-de-sac. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to take control, soul free here, and bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got an update on the Ferguson, Missouri case with regards to the curfew, what's coming next. Uh, That's all on the way. Plus, an Iowa state rep has allegedly been arrested for sex with an incapacitated woman. Well, Well, it's his wife. Well, the... Yes, but apparently there's a problem with this. Uh, We'll get you the details on that. The toll-free number, again, is 855-450-FREE. Let's jump right into your calls and thoughts. You can also reach us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's go to Equalizer calling from California. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Equalizer. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? What's on my mind? Well, you know, amid all the confusion and chaos and whatnot, uh, another topic I'd like to talk about is the police brutality and the SWATs getting the wrong house and murdering people. You know, I think that, you know, I think people need to start shooting back. They need to start shooting to kill because, you know, what? it's beyond beyond the point of, uh, you know, of recognition, I believe. I believe that this is not America, and it's gone from something that maybe, maybe could turn around, but, you know, most people are sitting on their ass watching their TV right now, and they don't care, so... I think the people that are patriots, if they don't want to be slaughtered by the Nazis, they ought to shoot to kill. Well, let me ask you. Okay, so, I mean, it would be 
you, you would agree that it's aggressive to just go out in the streets and and you know kill a cop. You're talking about cops coming into your house um, with I'm a. I'm talking about in general. This is war. You know, they're enemy soldiers. If they don't, if they if they decide that they want to be all moral and be constitutional, they get kicked out before they leave being a rookie. So they have to. They, they have no choice but to be corrupt. So just to be clear, you be you are just arguing people go out and start shooting police. You realize how uh, crazy that is? I don't care if it's crazy. They murder people. It's they, suicidal. They throw a flashbang. No, it's it is suicidal. suicidal. If you're, you're going to go out murder. and start killing cops, you might as well just go ahead and off yourself because you're going to be dead real enough. fast. You'll cause less misery, too. Well, I'm curious what but end you're seeking. What's your end vision looking like? I mean, what's your goal? What's my end vision? It's called justice. That's what our founding fathers did. They said no to corrupt tyrants. They were sick and tired of the abuse of the red coats. At what point do people say enough's enough? Well, okay, so so let's self-defense. say so let's say you've got a bunch of dead cops in the road. Now what? Freedom? Now what? That, that's no, but that's less. That's less people that can murder innocent civilians and say, "Oh, I thought he had a gun." But you and just murdered. They, they all, you just murdered people, in, in, according to the um, vision. Is it is it your here. is it your belief equalizer that all cops are are uh, tantamount to murderers? No, I believe that they. I believe that the majority are though also because. They have to serve the elite. They're policymen. They're not peace okay, officers. Okay, so but but just That's to be clear, you just said that you don't believe all cops are murderers. Yet you are advocating for the killing of police. You said in general. No, I'm not. Oh, you're I'm not advocating for self-defense. That's absolutely self-defense. But it's got to a you, point where you're saying if you just went out on the streets right now and blasted a cop away, that you would call that self-defense. Well, and I believe it's got to that point in society. I so, believe that. Absolutely. Let me ask you, you, you've drawn up the founding fathers here, and I think that their uh, their corpses are being uh, drug up in vain. So first off, if, uh, if the founding fathers fought for whatever they fought for, and the result is what we have today. So, no, Well, see, we've slid away from what they I don't know who we is. It's been, it's, it's been gone. The, the dream's been gone probably for 100 years plus. I think the Civil War ended it. But, I'm pretty sure you know, the dream was I mean, gone for every black person in America the moment that the power changed hands. Um, however, that's a, well, that's a damnable lie. You it's know, a it's damnable lie, biggest, is it? Some of the biggest and, and uh, richest slave owners were black. That that skipped out of history. A few I mean, and every, in Louisiana. That's true. In uh, and you know, in the 1800s. I mean, there were some prior to that. That were uh, yeah, everybody uses the race. Race. Can we get back oh, to yeah. the whole okay. killing? Yeah, let's forget about that. So Cops. let's point out for a second, we're talking about Canada. Canada just raided uh, the, let's see, they never fought a revolutionary war. And I don't even know of a single rebellion that occurred in Canada. I'm sure I'll get an email on that um, relatively quickly. But, uh, you know, look, they're higher on the economic freedom charts than the United States. Maybe yeah. the course to freedom is uh, sticking with the status quo. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe the status quo should keep sitting on their couch watching TMZ, and then they're going to complain, oh, why don't I have any freedom, if they care? See, here's the problem. You're the not going to get freedom by shooting stop. people. That's it's a damnable lie. It's got to... <laughs> okay. it's, it's, One it's more got, damnable it's, lie. It's Listen to this. Now. Here's some damnable truth for you. The fact is that three, that uh, non, non-violent revolutions are three times more successful than violent ones. That is the damnable truth. Go look it up. And there aren't uh, non-violent revolutions getting more effective as They're time They're more effective goes over on? time. In 1900, well. they were twice as effective. By the year 2000, they were near 3, 000, three times as effective. They'll get more effective over time because the government's got more better guns than you. I want to go soon as they think you're a problem, they're going to drop a Hellfire missile on your house before you ever get out with a gun in your hand. I'd like to go back to Derek J's question, sort of scenario for Equalizer. So, okay, you've got some dead cops in the street. Now what? What's your next move? Now what? That's a few less dead enemy soldiers. They're not cops. Let's, let's not call them what they are. They're not peace officers. They're enemy soldiers. That's what they're. they're well, I've, I know these are human beings, and I, I, you know, I suspect somebody like you, you either actually believe everything you say or you're actually an agent provocateur from the federal government. Well, he's obviously and, chicken. Oh, you know he what? wants other people to do it, yeah. not him. Either way. Well, I, I wouldn't go well, you know somebody what? into this, Mark. That's the, I'm uh, just saying. Yeah. Chicken is the obvious well, you, yeah. How many people do you need to be on board before the killing begins? You need a million and million. A million. million. You need a million people see, being you, willing you to make, kill. You make the assumption that there's not already. What about these militias? What about all the people what? out there in that the Tea Party? What about all the people in the Tea Party that mm-hmm. are sick and tired of having their human rights stepped on 
by well, what, what is everybody waiting Democrats. for then? If this is the a lot solution. of these Republicans, all the Tea Party is is they a bunch of Republicans, and a lot of these Republicans' kids work for the police force. That's a damn. Well, you know what. Uh, I, I want to know when your line was crossed because you seem pretty angry about this. What was the uh, straw that broke the camel's back for you? Well, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back is a bunch of stuff. Okay, I don't, I don't get where we, the people, have become the slave and not the person that that the. Uh, I thought it's we, the people, are in control of stuff, not we, the government. I mean, our, our founding fathers would have declared war ten times. The criminals are running things, not the other way around. And just because under color of law you wear a badge and do that, that doesn't make you any less than a criminal. I mean, what gives somebody a right, whether they're wearing this and that costume or not, to do evil things? I agree with those views. The founding fathers gave those rights to people in funny costumes. Well, I'd I'd like to say that nobody gives other people rights. Rights are human, uh, you know, kind of just by your nature, something you should have. Your God given right. So, Equalizer, you know, we may agree on some of the uh, philosophy here, but up to the point of, of action, and then then we part ways. You want to take action that will result in loss of life, and you call them enemy uh, enemy soldiers or whatever, and these are my That's neighbors. Are. I mean, here in Keene, New Hampshire, the police live around here, and they... Uh, you know, they're human beings who you can actually connect with. Yeah, they're doing the wrong thing in some instances, but in some instances, I have seen them act as peace officers and stop a fight from Steve, happening. So The only exception to this rule is the constitutional sheriffs like Richard Mack and Shane Harder. And look at them. Who? They stood against Big Brother, and guess what happened to him? He got framed for things he didn't do. So yeah. don't tell me that we have freedom and that the left is somehow... I didn't tell you that you have that. freedom. No, I wouldn't and tell you you'd have freedom. A moment. I would, however, question you as to when you picked up and moved for the Free State Project. I wish I could. I wish I had the money to oh, move. Oh, you don't have the money to do it, but you can go out and shoot somebody, sell a gun, and move. <laughs> well, Millions and millions of people you know, are sick and tired, and just because it's not plainly obvious that that's happening... Well, I'll tell you movement. what, Equalizer, why don't you let us They're know... They're sick and tired. That's fine. But the fact is, is that the path that you're suggesting will be unsuccessful unless you can get a large I mean, percentage of the population. Even Chris Cantwell knows that this is suicide. I mean, that's why he, he'll he admit you know to you that he, he won't do this stuff. Those sound cannons they have, they can be used on them just the same thing. All the, all the police did want to MRAP stuff, and they want to pretend like this is Iraq. What's your plan? Are you going to stand out in front of the police department with a sound cannon? I mean, how many people do? You, how many people in your area do you need to move on this? Because you'll never know if you have a million people around the the rest of the country. Yep, you need to write this out. Get yourself a legal pad. Start writing your plan out. And I want you to then then you can set it down and look at it the next day and see if it doesn't look like a bunch of gobbledygook nonsense tirades by a madman. Thanks for the call. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. I, you know, a lot of people are frustrated like that yes. guy is. They really are. It's or a bad he works plan. for the feds and is trying to gin up violence. It's Free Talk Live. <laughs> the results described should not be considered as guarantees of your actual earnings or profits. Results not typical. Check terms and conditions for income disclosures. How would you like to work from home, be your own boss, and make great money working online on your own time? These people saw the opportunity and took it. Working online changed my life. I was able to get out of my high-pressure corporate job. It all started with HomeIncomeOnline.com. I love that I'm able to spend more time with my kids while making over $10,000 per month. Go to HomeIncomeOnline.com today and enter special code 2121 to learn about a multi-billion dollar industry that's just waiting for you to tap into its incredible earning potential. Full and part-time opportunities are currently available. I just graduated college, and I'm making more money than I ever imagined. Are you ready to start making real money working online from home? Just go to HomeIncomeOnline.com now and enter special code 2121 to get your risk-free information kit. That's www.HomeIncomeOnline.com, special code 2121. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, August 18th, 2014, gold opened at 1297.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1344.77, 672.38 for a half ounce, or 336.19 for a quarter ounce. That's 1344.77, 672.38, and 336.19. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. 
I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Most people think you have to seek out a God for finding meaning in life, but really meaning comes from your awareness yeah. that your next move will have a consequence to you, whether good or bad. The meaning is created by the, the person having the experience. It's inside experience, you. Sir. Your awareness that your next move will have a consequence for your positive or negative view of the world, mm. that's and I, where all meaning comes from. And I fully believe that it's your interpretation of your experiences, how you decide to act as a result of the circumstances that surround you that uh, will ultimately decide your fate here as far as you know will you have a pleasant experience or will it be right. a hellacious one i believe that i believe heaven in heaven and, and hell but i believe that they exist right every now. moment like you right can now. choose heaven and hell yeah. and the people that do bad things experience hell because doing bad things results in bad stuff but you can always choose otherwise you can begin at any sure. moment sure. to start over sinners again. can be redeemed free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control toll-free here. It's 855-450-FREE. That number brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Coming up, we can give you the latest on Ferguson, Missouri. There's uh, news there involving the National Guard coming in, uh, as well as more from, uh, actually, Iowa. State representative arrested, apparently. For sex with his incapacitated wife. Uh, we'll share all of that with you when we get the chance. Your calls come first here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Also, want to remind you, if you've been thinking about getting some Bitcoin, now might be a good time. The price has dropped a little bit uh, recently. Now, of course, you never know what's going to happen. 20%. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen uh, tomorrow with Bitcoin. It's currently hovering around four hundred and sixty dollars, according to BitcoinAverage.com. Uh, so maybe a good time to jump in. Go and grab yourself a Bitcoin wallet for free at Blockchain.com. There's a wallet available for your iPhone, your Android phone, as well as a web wallet, and they they all tie in together to your blockchain account. Go to Blockchain.com for your free Bitcoin web wallet to get started with this amazing decentralized cryptocurrency that is taking the world by storm. It's uh, it's really an amazing uh, t- t- technology that I think is changing quite a bit. So we're going to go right into your calls. We've got Uber George. He's on the line in Virginia. Uber George, you're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Hey, guys. Um, first, I'd like to start off by saying that wit after show from last week, that was the most priceless bit of radio or you know podcasting show thing I've ever heard in years. And I hope you have another one on um, Wednesday night with Chris Kent Cant- and all that because that was pure gold. All right. Well, thanks for that. Go ahead. Uh, you're talking about the after show uh, that aired actually on Thursday night from last week for those that want to go back and hear it. But go ahead, George, with your thoughts. Uh, yeah, in a way, a week ago today, I was crossing the Canadian border to go um, pr- pretty much um, welcome Mark Emery back to freedom and stuff in, in uh, Windsor, 
Canada. Mark Emery, yeah. the Prince of Pot. He is out of federal prison now, and I don't think we've actually announced that yet. I think we talked about that it was coming uh, a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago when he was released. Sort of, it, What happened was he was released from the federal prison system, but then he goes into kind of like this immigration dungeon for a little while while he's sort of shuffled through bureaucracies to finally get him to the border and get him over into, uh, into Canada. So that took a couple few weeks, two, three weeks is from what I understand, and he is now actually back. So you went where, to Vancouver? Where was the, uh, the uh, party? No, it was, on, it was in um, Windsor, Canada, right across the river from Detroit. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's where they decided to drop him off. Yeah, uh, Windsor is about the um, same, same amount of driving as um, New Hampshire is from where I'm at. So I figured, yeah, what the hell, I'll go in. So the you feds, know, it was just, so how did it happen? The feds dropped him off at the border and he was free at the border, or was he taken into Canadian custody uh, at the border and then released? He was, well, I guess he was handed over to the Canadians at the tunnel. There's a, there's a bridge and a tunnel that connects Windsor to Detroit, and they took him via the tunnel, which was, I think, flooded out the day before because there was a huge rains on a um, week ago today. So it was Tuesday, last Tuesday, that they let him out. Anyway, they handed him over to the Canadian authorities, and they then processed him, and then they released him to this big crowd that I was at right there. It was like at least 100 people. So you know? exciting. That's fantastic. Now, Mark Emery, for our listeners who don't know, he was, and I guess still is, the uh, the editor, the publisher of Cannabis Culture, what was at one time a magazine that you could pick up in physical reality and is now a uh, website where they continue the same work they've always done uh, at the magazine, at Cannabis Culture's kind of, they've always been the other, you know, like the counterpart to High Times, sort of the Canadian counterpart uh, to High Times. And uh, it's great to have him back. He went to jail, or to prison rather, for about five years of his life, just under that, because I think federal good time is like 80%, so 80% of five years. Uh, he went there for selling seeds. He was a wanted criminal on, you know, the DEA's most wanted list or something ridiculous like that for selling plant seeds to people all around the globe, but certainly in the United States. And Canada actually extradited him for the purpose of him facing trial in the United States. So rather than protecting their supposed citizen, uh, they handed him over. And so yeah. hopefully we'll be able to have Mark on uh, the show again. It's been a number of years, but I would really, yeah. uh, really like that. I told him about all, I told him that too right there, and he, you know, and he remembered you guys, and uh, also me, I went up there, me and some apparently some Detroit city councilman also was there to apologize to him on behalf of all sane Americans, <laughs> like sir, this was not our idea to you know have you locked up like that, and boy, I tell you, man. I, I got really, really, really searched and interrogated for over an hour at the border. Really? You know? Yeah. yeah I've heard, by like, the like, United States or by, no, Can- by the Canadians? Really? Yeah. I guess that that that, that t- t- um, that'll teach me to tell the truth um, wh- on the real reason why I was going over there. Next time, I'll just say I'm going to you know, gamble. Oh, oh. Like that. <laughs> you know, I sort of myself like I, I, I want it's like. If telling the truth gets me this, I'm just gonna flat out lie. <laughs> so I get back and so what do they do? I... They tear your car apart? How deep did they? Uh, were they searching? I mean, how deep? Yeah, they searched the car and stuff, but they didn't tear it apart. You know, like U.S. Customs, I he- keep hearing would have done, but they hmm. did. Um, put th- they were pretty thorough on everything like that. And they interviewed me. They even searched my phone and all that stuff. They're looking for you know reasons to you know deny me wow. entry. Wow, search your phone. That's so invasive. Yeah. Did Mark so, yeah. Emery get to celebrate with a joint? Is cannabis even legal there? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so. he, oh, he, he sparked up. Yep. Uh, in fact, I, there's even a picture of Mark Emery on, you know, this, you know, lighting up joint. There's a picture of me with me right in the background. <laughs> I'm All curious. Right. The phone search with a um, free talk live shirt on. Uh, not yeah, bad. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for doing that, George. Um, now, the the phone search, were you able to observe them searching your phone, or was it something where they're like, okay, you put your passcode in, and we're just going to take this over here? How did that work out? Um, he did it right in front of me. You know, like I had, I didn't give him a passcode, but I had to unlock the phone for him. You like had that. to unlock the phone for him? He said, unlock this for me? Yeah, you know, like that. Uh, you're Actually, at, the border, at this right? point, they can do whatever like, they want. You don't like, really, he didn't have to. He could have turned around and gone home. Likely, well, that's true. Um, I mean, this yeah. is kind of his choice. So, I mean, it's un. It's they can unpleasant. do whatever they want, right? But this is why I say telling lies to government officials isn't lying. Well, wait. So, yeah. okay. These so these people, these people are going to aggress against you if you tell them the truth. So, you know, what are you supposed to do? Yes, I have Jews in the basement. 
You don't yeah, tell exactly. the truth in these circumstances. Um, so yeah, what happened? So you unlocked the phone, you gave it to him. Were you able to observe at that point or not? Yeah, I was, I was able to observe him. What, yeah, was the, what was the extent of his phone search? What did he do? He was just looking at some pictures and stuff or text messages and stuff like that, pretty much. <laughs> that, and, then that, and then he gave it back to me. But, did he know. go in your email box? No. Interesting. Okay. Because yeah. I was going to anyway, suggest I, if, if this I, is something that someone is concerned about, what you can do is before you cross the border, uh, you can, if at least with the Android phone, I don't know about the iPhone. I imagine there's some sort of ability to do this. But with the Android phone, you can go in there and just pull your identity out. You can, you know, you can unlink the Google account from, uh, from the phone. And, you know, then when you go into the email, it won't show anything. Nothing will be there. Now, obviously, you won't be able to check your email in that, uh, in that period of time. But if you don't want to have some of that stuff on your phone, you can, you can prevent that. Hey, thanks, yeah, George, like for sharing back. your story. Was there more that you wanted back, to share? I just said I was gambling, yeah, <laughs> on the way back. All right, man. Well, thanks for the call tonight. Do appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Yeah, that would really suck to be uh, trying to go somewhere and have to give some agent all of your, you know, put in passwords so they can access all of your stuff. It's Free Talk Live. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. It takes a lot of courage to face your own death, but I'm glad I finally did. See, I was putting off getting life insurance to protect my family, even though I knew it was important. Then my neighbor's husband died. I watched her struggle emotionally and financially. It really made me face reality. If my husband died, how would I pay the mortgage, the car payments, or keep up the life the kids and I had? I realized I needed to get us life insurance right away. So I called AIG Direct. In less than five minutes, I had a quote. I was shocked at how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. I feel so much better knowing my family has protection. Call AIG Direct right now for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you can save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-463-7479. That's 1-800-463-7479. 1-800-463-7479. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get hmm? a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and, of course... OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. You Come see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. We'll show you how at asiarunlikehellguide.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. 
We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Uh, more coming up on the latest with Ferguson, Missouri. What's happening out there? Also, Mark's got a story about a state representative who was apparently arrested for having sex with his incapacitated wife. It's an outrage. We will get into that when we get a chance. Your calls, of course, are also welcome. And again, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know what else is outrageous? How effective My Magic Mud is. I love My Magic Mud. For me, uh, what's most important now is the way my teeth feel so sort of slick and polished all the time. I don't wake up in the morning with that filmy feeling that I had when I used sort of regular toothpaste. Um, I do use a, a toothpaste, but I use a sort of I use a specialty one of those uh, natural frou frou uh, toothpastes. Toothpastes, but um, I use my magic mud about three times a week, and the reason is is I was using it, uh, you know, daily, but I had it, it removed all the stains from my teeth. It's a stain remover. It's also sort of a tooth polisher. It's like a it's like a hygienist visit in a tub. If you've got sensitivity, my magic mud apparently addresses. People have uh, you know their testimonials say that my magic mud helps with that. I don't have tooth sensitivity, but um, also people who don't like the taste of toothpaste generally, my magic mud has no toothpaste, no no taste at all. Check out what Dr. Griffin Cole has to say at MyMagicMud.com. Right there, they've got a video of him, and he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. It was created by Jessica Armand, a liberty-loving homeschool mother, mother of three. I was reading some of the testimonials inside the Amplifier group. Uh, Free Talk Live's got an Amplifier group. Ian will tell you how to how to join the AMP program. But, I mean, people just kept saying over and over again, I love it. Um, it gets like 150 applications from a tub. It's a great value, and every I haven't had a complaint yet. MyMagicMud.com. There's another great video we've got at Mud.FreeTalkLive.com. All right. Uh, so continuing on here, we've been actually, we started out with a guy calling in, taking the absolutely outrageous position uh, that the police should be shot. And I wanted to come back around to that because we we did have uh, Uber George call in on an unrelated uh, subject. So I wanted to come back to that um, about the idea of going after the police. This person was calling them enemy soldiers or enemy combatants or mm -hmm. something like that. That these aren't human beings. These aren't our brothers and our sisters. These aren't our neighbors. These are these automatons. The redcoats. Red guy yeah, did use that term. He uh, they're Hessians. The redcoats. They're hired guns. And he was calling I was for watching. So there's a, a cartoon out there called Liberty Kids. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm not going to diss it. Um, but I was looking at how they. Is this like a web cartoon? It, or like Jack's television? got it. It's a, I, I'm not sure. I think it was sent to us by okay. one of our loving listeners. Um, we get lots of things for Jack yep. <laughs> through, through the mail. <laughs> and it's nice. Uh, it is nice. It's nice that people people just send us clothes. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. Anyway. Um, he, Anything my size? Uh, no, but I've given you plenty, and I'm, ju <laughs> I'm just too big okay. for, your, for you to wear stuff. Anyway, um, they they portrayed, through most of this, they portrayed the Redcoats as, as you would expect. They're the bad guys. You know, and bad guys can't be good guys because they're bad guys. Right. 
interestingly, there was a part in there with John Adams where he points out, you know, he talks about the Boston Massacre, and he says, look, it wasn't revolutionary. The Boston Massacre was a bunch of drunk people throwing rocks at soldiers, and they mm. defended themselves. They say that on a kid's show? No, but okay. uh, I think it was a rowdy group of drunks or something like that they Got said it. it wasn't in i mean you know they it's it's a the revolution's a pretty serious topic they mm-hmm. you know um and i don't know what kids get out of these things necessarily probably yeah. have to watch it a few times to really understand but i thought it was interesting just how they just a little bit portrayed uh, you know these folks as human beings but this is the thing is is that it's so easy for us in narratives it's so easy to create a good guy and a bad guy mm-hmm. and a bad guy's a bad guy can't be a good guy and a good guy, well, we have to look over all of the bad things they've done. Well, I mean, it's long been a tactic in war to dehumanize the opposition, right? Oh, they're not your they're not fellow human beings. They're just Japs. You know, they're just Krauts. They're just fill in the uh, you know, the, the, the stereotypical insulting uh, term. And that's what so I'm not really sure where I was going with that. Oh, I know what I wanted to say about the people who are advocating, as our caller was earlier, advocating for just coming right out, basically, and advocating for killing police. He essentially shoved them all into the same category and suggested that they all deserve to die and that they all deserve to die immediately, not like when they were attacking somebody or aggressing against somebody, which is what some people will couch their terms with. This guy was just coming right out and saying that. And I'd like to say about people like him, when they come into your group, if you are somebody who is an active participant in the uh, spreading of the ideas of freedom, when someone like that guy comes into your group and starts talking about, hey, we ought to do, you ought to do, because again, he wasn't doing what he was suggesting other and people ought to doesn't. do. Uh, but, you know, coming in and making those suggestions, you ought to start killing the police, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, look out! Because whether that person is or is not an agent provocateur, they're bad news. That that particular viewpoint is incredibly dangerous. It's going to likely lead to people being arrested, possibly people being killed if they take this person seriously. And I think that you need to appro- approach people like him with compassion. And you know, don't come to the conclusion that oh, it must be an agent provocateur. It could just be an angry libertarian. You know? What do you think the percentage chance? Or an angry. Hmm? What do you think the percentage chance is that it's an agent versus just somebody who's upset? I mean, I understand I this know. is wild speculation. I have but, no idea. You know, I would say like ninety percent people well intentioned, just not thought through. Like this guy sounded like he had all the right principles, all the right ideas, except for follow through like let come up with a plan for enhancing your own freedom i'm with that i'm down for that goal but you know killing people that shows you've run out of ideas you know w- when you resort to violence you've run out of ideas and it seems like most people don't have any ideas between uh obeying and then killing Right. Like nobody considered not paying taxes. How about not uh, let's you know opt out of the system, not following the regulations, doing agorism, operating outside of, you know, the, the government control apparatus, not getting licenses, begging permission of bureaucrats. These are all things that we can do and, and we can immediately achieve more freedom from doing them in our own personal lives and uh, and with our family. And Mark actually brought it up. You know, if you love freedom ostensibly, why not move to New Hampshire? Why not join the Free State Project? Come up here you know the yes the political system may be totally useless where you live but not in new hampshire you can actually have liberty-minded people get elected here so i I, you know i'm not exactly i'd like him to take a few deep breaths before he uh picked up and moved but he did seem to have reasonably good ideas on liberty but he was clearly very angry very upset and i can understand i've been upset i've been there yeah um uh, and I've been angry, and I probably still am pretty angry, but I want to, you know, I, I try to get control of myself. I, it's not like I haven't in the last year thought the way he did for a moment in time. But I understand that that is a system that isn't going to work. And what you what I want to know is, is if you're so upset that you're proposing picking up weapons and shooting government agents of any sort, have you done anything else? Right. Have you done anything of value? Because I'm telling you today that that isn't going to work, that you're going to give everything you've got to get nothing and probably achieve less of what you, you know, it'd be a negative effect on what you want to achieve. Right. I hope you don't have kids. 
you know, that, that are counting on you for something or somebody at a, at a workplace who's counting on you for things because you'd essentially be leaving them in the lurch because you're going to be dead when well, you start going around shooting police. I think the right solutions start with exercising one's imagination. There's not mm-hmm. enough imagination in this world, so you could start making the world a better place by dreaming it. That's step one. Yeah, well, you know, I guess there is some imagination involved in thinking about uh, deadly plots against your fellow man, but I think that there's not much effort that you have to put in. Uh, no, there to that isn't, sort of because thing. we asked him. Then what? And he didn't yeah. have an answer. No. Well, I mean, it's the it's the feeding the white dog, feeding the black dog analogy. You know, uh, there's a, a black dog and a white dog within each man, and uh, which one wins? The one you feed. When you sit there and you scheme about polishing the poor your gun, black dog. I mean, you know, they always get the bad end of things. I understand. Toll free numbers. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm -hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk free by calling 800-952-5760 Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. That's eight hundred nine five two fifty seven sixty. Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial in right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got a website. You can go there and get interactive at freetalklive.com. So enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. And if you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, then please become an amplifier. Just go to amp.freetalklive.com. Mark mentioned it earlier. You can do it for 5 bucks a month. We'll take that five bucks in and invest it into the show, getting on more radio stations around the country, bringing more internet listeners on board and exposing new people to the ideas of freedom. You get perks as an amplifier, like access to the Amp Only call-in lines, the Amp Only podcast, Amp Only, uh, there's an Amp Only forum, as well as the Amp Only Facebook group, which has been a lot of fun as of late. So go to amp.freetalklive.com and get behind the show and help us get Free Talk Live in more ears. Again, that's amp, A-M-P, dot freetalklive.com. Let's go to Littlefoot in Silver City, New Mexico. You're on Free Talk Live, Littlefoot. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk about um, the agent provocateur subject. I worked for years. I'm 59 years old. I'm a, what they call a baby boomer. Um, well, all human beings on this planet are veterans of the atomic war because it was global. And it's still hanging in there, fallout and all that stuff. I mean, you know, that's like a whole other subject, a can of worms. And then um, I'm a veteran of the drug war, the uh, Cold War. The, I'm a Vietnam era veteran. Um, I'm a veteran. Now they're saying the Cold War, which which I was in also, a veteran of that. Okay. Uh, I was on a nuclear submarine in the Navy. And some of the new historians are calling it World War Three, and then there's people talking about re, you know, kindling the Cold War. Um, that's what and we need. All of, and, and then they're saying, oh, that's going to be World War Three, and then some of them are saying, no, that's going to be World War Four. Well, anyway, okay. after working in, um, you know, after getting out of the Navy and working in five nuclear power plants, I went to work with uh, Greenpeace people, Earth First people, Eat First people, the Atomic Veterans, uh, you know, uh, that whole bunch. There's a bunch of them, but I'm, I'm not a joiner. I didn't join. I don't belong to any groups. And uh, I know Derek well, uh, used to work for Greenpeace, didn't he used to do... Yeah, I like did outreach. Outreach. yeah, I did outreach and fundraising for Greenpeace International. Okay, so you were uh, you worked in the military with nuclear stuff. Then you went and you joined some uh, some groups to what oppose nuclear weapons. After you you had done military work, uh, not... the, the, no, the testing in Nevada at the test site. It's uh, actually they have exploded nearly seven hundred nuclear bombs there. Mm. They had some treaty year back. I think it was around nineteen sixty. And they stopped doing them atmospherically uh, and doing them, uh, you know, subterranean explosions. Okay, so I'm, I, we're and kind I, of all over the map here. I'm, maybe I'm missing out what you're what you're getting at. Oh, but oh, you, so now you're talking the, about nuclear about explosion, earlier, t- you know, nuclear testing. The, well, that's what we went. You asked me, and I'm telling you, that's what we went to try to stop. You and brought up so agent provocateurs as, at first. As a volunteer, well, see, because of the sensitivity, uh, you know, the government sent agent provocateurs and uh, undercover people. I've worked side by side for them. How did you I mean, know? With them, but, you mean like into well, the Greenpeace so, group, for instance? You're, you're saying they sent agents? Yeah, Greenpeace and Earth First and all okay, of so them. Okay, so what they clued you in to who the agents were? Well... It was pretty obvious to most of us because they had a different vibe. Mm. 
mm-hmm. they weren't kind of, they weren't really as tuned into the whole scene and and we would watch them and and we had a guy that went with us to Yucca Mountain that's where they were doing a, a you know pilot test program kind of thing or not a pilot program but a test program drilling gigantic tunnels in Yucca Mountain which is right next to the test site. See, um, Area 51 is in that same test site, but it's miles So would the mi- agent's I mean, provocateur attempt to provoke? I mean, would they suggest violence? Yeah, well, they were, they, they, well, they were successful one time, and the, half the group uh, during the walk across America, see, we joined up with a bunch of people, at the DOE office in Las Vegas, Nevada, in 1992, the 500 year anniversary of Christopher Columbus discovery. I think you're going off on back, way too many tangents, but thank you, Littlefoot, for the call tonight. No. You do have to look out for the uh, the agents' provocateur. I don't. It doesn't sound like they were trying to provoke too too much there. Otherwise, you know, of course, it might have taken them another half an hour to actually get to to that story. Um, but, you know, it, whether somebody's showing up and they've got a bad vibe or a strange vibe, that's not always an indicator that they may be an agent. It may be an indicator that they just might be someone who's socially inept, you know, somebody who isn't really good at, uh, at getting along with people or not experienced at, uh, in, in groups, that kind of thing. I can tell you the uh, the guess, the, 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 the who's the Fed game that goes on um, sometimes. It's a dangerous <laughs> game. Yeah, sometimes at some of these uh, liberty-oriented events. I... I find it to be, you know, really a nasty game. It's not. It's it's a it it's just nerds saying, "Hey, he's a nerd." Um, mm-hmm. In many cases, and really, just not a game to be played. Um, the fact is, the best way to operate is as though a um, as though you would in front of a Fed all the time. You should be able to do what you you know would right. do what you do, say what you say. In a way that isn't going to get you arrested, even if your wife's a Fed. Yeah, that's why I say that you know the, when it comes to having these agents provocateur around, it doesn't matter whether they're an agent or whether they're just somebody with an awkward you know inability to relate to other people, uh, or just you know an angry person who feels like they need to get some sort of revenge. Whatever the reason is that they're around, they're if they're advocating for violence, it needs it needs to be opposed. It needs to be opposed verbally. Um, if people are around advocating for violence and you don't speak out against it, it can be seen. Now, I'm not. This isn't legal advice, but it can be seen as assent. Like if you're, if somebody's around plotting some sort of violent act and you don't speak out and say that you're not interested in that, then they could perhaps, you know, take your silence as you agreeing to uh, the plotting of the violent Certainly act. Certainly could. So I, you know, if somebody starts coming around and talks like, "Hey, start killing cops, everybody." Then speak out against it, number one, and try to hold that person with compassion and show that that individual why it is that they're wrong. And I would say that if that person doesn't calm down and uh, doesn't cease advocating that violence, like once you've explained to them, hey, you know, this is a peaceful group of of activists that you've encountered here that you've come into. And, you know, we like to come at things from a peaceful perspective. And if you want to keep hanging around us, we'd love to have you keep, you know, being around us and helping out with activism, but not if you're going to be talking like that. You know, let them just lay it, lay it right out there. And if they continue to disrespect that request, that's it. I think at that point you're justified in, in cutting the person off. That's how I'd handle it. Yeah, whether they're a Fed or not. Exactly. Because yeah, either way, they are a huge liability because somebody, somebody might take them seriously. They might tap into somebody's a- anger or their rage. And and they may begin to actually plot to to hurt somebody. And you want to talk about a bad thing for the the movement, if you will. If uh, you know if somebody starts a violent plot to actually harm, you know whether it's government officials or average people or whatever. I mean, these are going to be really they're not going to be made. The the liberty movement will not be made look good by somebody going around doing the things that that caller was talking about, killing well, people. Earlier what about in those the show. people that uh, you know out in Nevada that killed those cops? I mean, they're yeah. arguably liberty sorts. Yeah, didn't they have an Adam Kokesh uh, video on their YouTube preferences? Yeah, or something? Something like that. I think there were also um, perhaps uh, uh, snitches to the cops, but um, you know, it's it's hard to say. There's all kinds of stuff out there, but people are going to believe what they want to believe. And if you give them, uh, you know, just a little bit of evidence that oh, those liberty sorts are dangerous, well, they're going to believe it. 
So we'll give you more on the latest on Ferguson. There's uh, pictures. I'll post these up to our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Apparently, protesters were marching on the governor's office in Missouri. Guards refused to allow the crowd in. There's a picture that we'll share with you of uh, two fairly large guards holding a rotating uh, door from, you know, preventing people from coming into these government offices that claim that, well, the protesters weren't there on official business, so they were not allowed in. Several protesters apparently were arrested, including uh, one lady for blocking the entrance to the government building there in, uh, in St. Louis. So you can share our, uh, excuse me, this is, yes, his St. Louis office, the Governor Nixon St. Louis office. Uh, share your thoughts here. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the disturbing story about a state representative who's been arrested in Iowa for sex with his incapacitated wife. And your calls and thoughts, even a mother who's arrested for cursing in a grocery store. We've got all those stories and more. Your calls are welcome. 855-450-FREE. You take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live, and you can also join us via Skype at username lrn.fm. The Lumber Liquidators Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is on with over 250 of the latest styles all on sale now. Get Black Forest Oak Laminate for a crazy 39 cents a square foot. Beautiful and durable bamboo for just $159. Classic pre-finished gunstock oak hardwood for $149. All gorgeous Bella Wood pre-finished hardwood is on sale. Plus get special 24-month financing. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Hurry, this sale ends Tuesday the 2nd. The fall flooring season is here. Why aren't you? Hi. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The Internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F E E N P H O N E.com. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 18th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.56 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,300 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $460. Antiwar.com reports, backing by escalating U.S. airstrikes, the Kurdish Peshmerga once again attacked the Mosul Dam, Iraq's largest hydroelectric dam, and has reportedly regained primary control over the heavily contested site. Kurdish media reported that the Peshmerga has control of most of the dam, with some officials putting the figure at 80% with the offensive continuing. It is likely that the dam will continue to be fought over as a hugely valuable asset for any side to control. The Peshmerga offensive began Saturday with a push against villages in the immediate vicinity and with U.S. airstrikes hitting ISIS targets in the area. They finally got a hold of the dam once more. Though Kurdish officials are touting the takeover as a major accomplishment, they had only lost the dam a little over a week ago to begin with, and it remains to be seen if they will actually be able to hold it when ISIS inevitably launches their own counter-counter offensive. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Multiple sources report a curfew was in effect for the second consecutive night in Ferguson, Missouri. Saturday night into Sunday morning, several canisters of smoke and tear gas were used and seven people were arrested for failure to disperse after the curfew took effect. Captain Ron Johnson of the Missouri Highway Patrol said police were trying to give protesters every opportunity to comply with the curfew. On Sunday night, there were noticeably fewer police officers on a one-mile stretch of road where protesters had been gathered each night. There were even a few cars on the road which had been closed to traffic. Hundreds of people, some holding signs, paraded up and down the avenue. The peaceful nature of the protest changed around 9 p.m. when marchers began retreating as police trucks slowly moved down the street and smoke filled the road. Police said one person had been shot Sunday night and suffered minor wounds. Officers fired tear gas into a crowd of hundreds of protesters marching towards a police command post Sunday night. CNN Steve Kastenbaum said from the scene, authorities also struck one defiant protester with rubber bullets. St. Louis County Police, however, said that several of the protesters had thrown Molotov cocktails towards the officers before the authorities shot tear gas towards them. The scene was a far cry from a packed church earlier Sunday, where hundreds of people gathered for a two-hour rally demanding justice for Michael Brown. Civil rights activist Al Sharpton told the crowd that the protest would continue. He told the protesters not to loot in Brown's name, saying, there's a big difference between an activist and a thug. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is only about a year into his term in office, but is being charged with multiple counts of murder and is facing growing calls to step down. Protest leaders Imran Khan and Tahir al-Qadri have issued an ultimatum demanding Sharif agree to resign within 48 hours or face growing civil disobedience, including tax resistance. Khan said, don't pay your taxes, gas bill, general sales tax, electricity bills, taking a pledge with several other protesters to continue to resist until Sharif is forced from power. Sharif faces the murder charges over a bloody crackdown on supporters of Qadri in June, where security forces killed 14. Qadri, a Sufi cleric who has been critical of corruption in the ruling PMLN party, had been living in exile in Canada but returned for the protest. Sharif supporters continued to spurn calls for a resignation, with Balochistan Chief Minister Abdul Malik Balok insisting the demands were unconstitutional and that the protest had to end. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Japan grants suffrage to female robots. And a hypochondriac maple tree is always convinced it has Asian longhorn beetles. The following two statements are true. The previous statement is false, and this is the Onion Week in Review. This week, Americans nationwide were stunned to hear horrific allegations on Wall Street revealing that numerous junior bankers have been forced to survive on a mere $6,800 per week. The findings, which implicate numerous high-profile financial institutions such as Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and Citibank, suggest that hundreds of first-year bankers are constantly deprived of basic necessities, including penthouse apartments overlooking Central Park and regular company-financed vacations to the French Riviera. Many of these bankers are 23 or 24 years old and don't even have access to an expense account of over $50,000 a year. Not only that, but some of them are making as little as 20 times minimum wage. I mean, this is truly disgraceful. This is the Onion News Network. This 
is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Still to come here tonight, state representative arrested in Iowa. He had sex with his incapacitated wife, and Mark says he supports it. Uh, that is the sex with the incapacitated wife. I definitely want to get to that when we get a chance. Derek J. joining us here as well tonight from DerekJ.me. And we'll continue with your phone calls here at 855-450-FREE. Erod is in Marietta, Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Derek and Mark. Yeah, hi, guys. Hey, hey Erod. Can we, can we talk? Yes. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> Please. I'm like, I, okay. I'd like to get your perspective. You know, I've been listening to you guys, oh, God, since, since you know, since then you've been in um, uh, Florida. You know, I remember when Mark Long time. Was, yeah, right, Manowich, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever your name was. And I really enjoy your program. I had some inter- interesting conversations today, and... Um, and I was just kind of thinking, just mulling this thing over, what's going on in, um, in, um, in, down in Missouri there. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to really get your perspective. Um, and I want you to get your perspective as a white person. Uh, <laughs> I do know, speak I, for all white people. <laughs> yeah, right. A white but, leader. Know, but, but, we finally found <laughs> one. <laughs> the white leader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, uh, and, uh, and, of course, I, I, I let the cat out the bag. Yeah, I'm a black guy. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> You know, and I've, uh, you know, I've called in. I'm an occasional call. I don't call very often, you know, you know, once every, you know, you know several months or Quarter. once every six months or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I had some interesting conversations today with a bunch of people. And what do you think about this? I mean, what do you think about black people in general down there? Because, you know, on one hand, I hear, oh, well, people are, are not talking about, well, what about all the murders in Detroit and things and like that? And they're trying to equate the two. Well, you're, you're pissed off about one cop shooting a black kid, but you're not pissed off about, you know, all these other murders. And, and, and of course, I've got my strong opinions about that because how, you know, they're they're simply just not related. But I just would like to know. I mean, and, and, you know, you guys are probably a little bit different. You're not probably the, you know, the average status, you know. But, I mean, but what do you think? I mean, to, I think that, you know, I think the people of Ferguson are, I think the people of Ferguson are largely victims um, right now of both the police of Ferguson and then the people that, you know, like the criminal element reacting to the police in Ferguson. So I think that, you know, people that are protesting are probably doing the right thing. They're fed up and they're sick of the way that, uh, you know, people are stereotyped. Uh, black people are stereotyped in this country. But mm-hmm. then I think that there are people that have taken the opportunity of this protest and it's like, hey, let's get a brunch of free stuff stuff and that that diminishes the protest for those people and it's got to be very frustrating i'm sure that there are folks that are scared in their homes that they just don't they just like all this stuff to stop i don't think that there's i don't think anything about black people in this country because as far as i'm concerned black people just happen to have different tint of skin so this is just an issue of people right i think of people as individuals yeah, I don't see how this is racially motivated. Maybe I missed uh, oh, I an think important racial motivation. fact. Oh, okay. You because mean the shooting? A, because it was a white cop who killed a black teenager? Oh, I do think that we all carry around in ourselves, uh, to some extent, stereotypes and thoughts about other folks. Do I think that this cop would have treated a white guy the same way as he would have treated a black guy in Ferguson, Missouri? I don't. Uh, okay. I don't Okay, well, yeah, well, you know what, and I appreciate that because you know I, I'm I really don't like to um, uh, you know play the race card. I, I try to look at people you know as you know as they are, and um, um, you know, basically as a liberty-minded person like myself, and you know I'm you know I'm sure you guys obviously are. You know, I, I just try, I try to just step back and you know to, and take a look at it. But you know, in, in cases like this, you know, it's it's. And, you know, you can go and you can look at all kinds of things. You look at the case in New York, guy got choked to death in Los Angeles. I mean, you got a woman just, you know, cop is just, highway patrolman is beating the crap out of them. And, I'm, I, you know, and I, you know, I don't want to be naive about this thing. It's like, well, wait a minute now. I mean, I don't see that happening to a lot of white folks. But then again, though, you know, I, 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 I do see, 
I mean, this police state that we're living in, I mean, I see what's going on. I, I saw what happened in Fullerton, California, with a homeless guy, Kelly Thomas. Yeah. I mean, they where the cops just beat the crap. In fact, they beat the hell out of him worse than they did uh, Rodney King. I mean, Rodney King survived. This guy mm-hmm. died a day or two later, yeah. you know. And there, I, you know, I, I, I see the case. They shot the homeless where, guy to death in New Mexico exactly. as well. Exactly. And, and and I see all this, you know, and and, and so you know, I, and so I I don't think it's necessarily you know just just a, a racial thing. No. I think it's more of a, you know, it, it's this you know this 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 it's a power thing, thing that, for sure. Well, there's it, a lens. Exactly. There, there's a bunch of different lenses that we see things through. So, mm-hmm. um, for instance, I would contend that Trayvon Martin, like they they always talk about the hoodie, right? I would contend yeah. that Trayvon Martin would probably have been better off if he was wearing an Oxford shirt, a tie, and a pair of pressed slacks. And yeah. that in and of itself would have been fine. Like I think that the clothes you wear matter, the way you talk matters, like mm-hmm. the obviousness of sort of being mentally disturbed matters, the color. Mm-hmm of your skin matters like all these things uh matter and that mm-hmm. any like they can that they it's a confluence of them and how many of them mm-hmm. sort of uh you know how many of them are in, in any given situation is kind of what uh, what matters i have a good friend of mine his, his name's julian he's uh, he's a black guy but I, having been out with him, there's never a problem. It's like he's never treated like a black guy because he, he if he was on the phone right now, he'd sound like anybody. He has no he has no accent. He's completely mm-hmm. sort of Midland accent, and uh, he's you know light skinned and wears like you know pressed clothing and things like that. So it he blends, he passes or whatever the terminology is. And so I think that there's lots of different lenses, and these things affect the way that uh, people are perceived, and it's. Sad, but I think that humans are probably going to use those lenses for a long time. Okay, well, bottom line is, do you think that um, uh, that there is a relationship, or well, well, not a relationship, but do you think that you know when when people because I, I've been hearing this all day today is that you know well black folks don't care when there's black on black crime, but they care about when the police. You know, that's a ridiculous a, uh, a statement. I mean, that the yeah, whole idea. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. And here's my reason why: is is, is number one, you know, if you now thugs are, you know, and when they kill other thugs, they're doing. I mean, they're acting within character. They're a thug, and this is what thugs do. Mm-hmm. And police, on the other hand, they're supposed to be doing the right thing. They're not supposed to be killing, and. Number and two, I'm not paying you know the thugs to do what they do. However, I am in my local municipality. I am paying the cops to do supposedly the right thing. And then thirdly, I mean, there is, if there was a thug headquarters somewhere, you know, the the thug house, or if there was a a thug yeah, it's called the White House. somewhere, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, well, exactly, yeah, you're right, you know. But if there was in this area, you know, people would actually go out there and you know shut them down. But in in the black community, there are always people complaining about black and white, black on black uh, crime, and they are actively out there doing something about Absolutely. it. But that's never heard in the media. You're always they always put, oh, you're you're just pissed off because of you know because a um, a white cop shot a, a black kid. But you know what? Black cops shoot you know um, a black uh, kid. Absolutely so, you true. Know, yeah. So, so I don't I, I don't even see the relationship. Well, but but I. But I guess the, my call and those was cops, basically, those black cops are toting water for the man, just like the white cops are. They're all working for yeah. the man. They're, I mean, that now you've got yeah. black taskmasters. That's the difference between yeah. the you know the plantations of old and those of new. The larger the, the newer plantations yeah. are large. Uh, they're you know larger than most people can see. A and protest isn't going to do any good against uh, cri- criminals. A, po- mm-hmm. a protest against the government may very well do something. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with hey. Pretty please don't shoot me just because of my color. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah. So do you think, uh, okay, and, and I know that, you know, obviously nobody can speak for any group of people, you know, and, and uh, no group of people is monolithic in their thinking. But generally speaking, do you think that, uh, is, this, is this the attitude, I, I, I don't know, within the white community, and, and again, it, it's so pathetic. What? You hold on. Hold on, Aaron. <laughs> we'll bring you back here. Firm that question up, and we'll come back to you in just a moment. Toll-free number, the white community. Again, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what it means when people say the black community because there's different communities and they mix. He feels and separated today. We're on the way here. This is Free Talk Live. 
Crashed, The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We are inviting you to bring up whatever's on your mind. A lot of people calling over the weekend, especially on Saturday night, about the situation in Ferguson. And I do have an update here. Uh, we've also got Erod on the line. We're going to bring him back in just a moment. Also want to let you know how to get a free pound of some of the best of the best coffee out there. Yeah, BuzzBox coffee. It's shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. You can get a free pound by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's a subscription. You can cancel at any time, get your free pound, try it, and go if you want. That's fine. But if you stick with the subscription, realize you're helping Free Talk Live help people around the world because um, 
for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we're able to give another micro loan to help another family get their feet up underneath them and, uh, you know, get onto the path of actual human freedom. You've got to make money to actually be free. And that's what we hope to do for folks. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. You drink coffee anyway, you might as well get it through coffee.freetalklive.com. Ferguson, Missouri is the site of a lot of protests happening, and that's because of the shooting of a young man, Michael Brown. He was age 18, apparently shot to death by a police officer, allegedly while running away with his hands in the air, uh, shot in the back by an officer. Well, Dar- the autopsy uh, came Wilson. out. They got He got shot six times, so it's not like he was just shot once. And yeah. yes, it was. there, was, there wasn't, weren't any um, uh, powder burns on the body, so... It's quite possible that he wasn't very close. That's what uh, one of the conclusions that one can draw from that. And the, the but they first all claim do seem was to have was... enter into the front of the body. Oh, in the front of the body. They do. the The witness testified that he was shot in the back, okay. but it may be that he turned. You know, I mean, you, you know, in real life, people don't be. fall the way they fall in video games. Right. Right. Yeah. It could very well be that he had turned. So, well, anyway, we don't know what exactly happened, but we'd love to hear from you. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450 free. We continue here with Erod listening in Georgia. Now, Erod, you were uh, you're trying to throw a question out there as we were going away to the yeah. last break and didn't really have time to to kind of form it fully. Go ahead now with your thoughts. Yeah, okay. I was I was just generally trying to get a um a general gist of what, you know, people, you know, think about this whole situation. You know, other people um, I've been, um, you know, I haven't checked in with Rush Limbaugh to see what his marching orders are or anything like that. But I, I just wanted to know whether or not, you know, and, and again, and, and I, I really hate to have to say stuff like this, you know, because I know that not everybody thinks the same way. But I just wanted to know whether or not white people in general, and I know you cannot speak for people in general, but do you feel as though, you know, the, the, is the attitude, uh, and, I, and again, you know, I talk about the, the white community, black community, and I really hate those terms. I really do. But do you feel as though people are saying, hey, these people ought to just go home and just let the justice system take its course? No, I've well again. I hang out with activists, so I have certainly not heard anyone say anything like that. Well, I've been Facebook saying something gets... closer to that. I've been saying that people shouldn't be protesting; they should go home and they should analyze the situation and figure out what makes the most sense. Marching in the street is not solving any problems. No, it just it's getting a lot of. It's going to bring attention, though. Yeah, that's what I mean, people because, say. Because, because do you do you actually think that if no one did any? Um, I mean, let's say, uh, you know, the, the burning of the quick trip. If that didn't happen, do you think this would have gotten the attention that it, it deserved? Well, I can tell you I don't support setting anything on fire, but... And neither uh, do I. Neither do I. But I, I can tell you that a letter-writing campaign to the city council is not going to change anything, and that will not get any attention. So I can understand why people feel the need to get in the streets. I mean, there's... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't think violence is the solution. I don't think destruction of property is going to help anything. I think it muddies the issue. And I, I agree. But do you think now? Now they've issued this curfew. This you know they don't want they want to institute almost martial law into the area. Do you think these people should comply with that? Well, because I certainly do not. No, I mean, I don't, yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, you know, I it's twelve o'clock. How comply dare with it. you tell me that I have to leave the street? Hell, no, I'm not I leaving the street. I think, yeah, yeah, I think if you're a free person, you should you shouldn't have to obey a curfew. Oh. And as long as you're willing to go to court, you know, and and you understand, they're probably going to arrest you, charge you with resisting arrest and all that. I think that uh, I, I don't blame anybody for going out and violating a curfew in that case. But Derek okay. J, why why should people stay inside when they're ordered to? Because this will blow over. This is a temporary military occupation. Well, the curfew has been lifted uh, at this point, according to uh, various news sources. It's uh, ABC with the report on what's happening in Ferguson right now. Let me just give you an update, Erod, while we've got you on the line. You're welcome to comment okay. here. Uh, Missouri Governor Jay Nixon has ordered the state's National Guard to be deployed into the city this morning after another violent night of clashes between protesters and police over the shooting death of Michael Brown, which happened on August 9th. So it's been over a week at this point, uh, protesters have demanded that Darren Wilson, the officer in question there, be held accountable for shooting Brown. Uh, so again, bringing in the National Guard, President Obama appeared wary, claiming that he urged the governor to ensure the troops were used in a, quote, 
limited way. I spoke to Jay Nixon about this and expressed interest that if it was used, it would be in a limited and appropriate way. He described the support role they'd be performing, and I'll be watching to see that it's helping, not hinder hindering progress. So rest assured, America, Barack Obama is going to be watching this, right. and that'll yeah. make everything all better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, like that's going to happen. Yeah. But you know what, though? And, and I guess lastly in closing, you know, I, I do appreciate the comments that Rand Paul made concerning the whole uh, I'm not familiar with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rand Paul spoke um, uh, pretty harshly on the um, the militarization of the police force and that tanks and, and all this kind of thing should not be uh, – uh, should not be involved, and you know, and I, and I really do appreciate that, partic particularly on his level, um, you know, being a member of uh, Congress. Um, and, but um, I, I just, um, I don't know. I, I guess I just wanted to get a feel of what right. you know, what other uh, other people. You've gotten the feel of what three white guys uh, think yeah, about this. You know I have what? no color. And you know yeah, and you know what? This is probably not the like the, the right radio show to call in because you know you guys are liberty minded, and I, and I and I I've been listening to you long enough to understand that. But I was just kind of hoping that well, maybe you know there's other people in the street that you guys talk to, and and so know, I disagree with Derek J on this feeling. one. I think that it's fine that people are are getting out in the streets. I think taking action is important, even though I I agree with the critique that protests don't really ultimately do much of anything. I mean, as it's far not as action is chasing your tail. As far as changing policy, it may not do much of anything. But I think that you can meet people at a protest who you've never met before. I think that it can. Then have to get together at a church at a local venue. Don't march in the street. It looks desperate, and it's mm. not a solution. Interesting. All right. But well, it brings attention to it. Lots it of things bring attention. attention to the issue that aren't useless. Do you think? Do, do, you, do you think that this would have gotten national attention if 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 if, if, uh, if the streets weren't exploding? We can all play the what if game. We can use our imaginations to think of creative ways to draw attention to a situation oh. that don't involve violence I'm, I'm or useless you, marches. Erod, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate okay, hearing from you. you. Uh, yeah, I mean, stay away from the violence. Obviously, I think violence is a bad idea, but I, I just, as... As jaded as I am towards marches and protests, and I'm pretty jaded towards them, I still have seen some value come from them over the years in that you're, you're bringing people together who might not otherwise be interested in going to a potluck dinner. And bringing those people out to meet one another, I think, can, can help ge generate those ideas that you're talking about for whatever is next. Thomas Jefferson said, Nothing gives one person so much advantage over another as to remain always cool and unruffled under all circumstances. Mm. It's not what I'm seeing at those marches. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts on Ferguson or whatever on Free Talk Live. My Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist light clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. 
That's keenvention.info. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Markets went into a frenzy today after the price of money suddenly skyrocketed to $90 a dollar. Onion reporter spoke to economics professor Mark Cosgrave about the soaring cost of U.S. currency and the impact of increasingly unpredictable dollar-to-dollar -dollar rates. Right now, money prices are steeply rising with no signs of slowing down. This morning alone, the price of dollars nearly tripled, with one cent worth approximately six dollars. That's exponentially higher than even a week ago when money was trading at roughly $53 on the dollar. To put it bluntly, we're now in the midst of a national economic crisis. According to Cosgrave, the abrupt spike in dollar prices initially caused many Americans to hold on to their money, hoping that the $90 cost of dollars would soon dip back down. But as prices continued to climb, investors panicked and began purchasing as much money as possible. But with the cost of quarters hitting $4.97 and the $5 bill jumping to a 12-year high of $372, the days when you could get 30 or forty dollars for just a couple of bucks are unfortunately long gone. This is the Onion News Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want right here, toll free, the number 855-450-FREE, and that number is brought to you by ProXPN, and uh, there's all kinds of great ways that you can help support Free Talk Live. One of them is to shop with us. Just go to shop.freetalklive.com. You can link into Amazon's, uh, Amazon Canada, US, and more, all there at shop.freetalklive.com. There's certain things you can't get on Amazon, like modafinil. From ModUp.net, if you need focus on our feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, check out Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from ModUp.net and how it's making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge they need. They at ModUp.net provide only the highest premium quality Modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Go to modup.net, order with Bitcoin, you'll save 33%. And whether you order with Bitcoin or not, use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. That's code FTL, like Free Talk Live at modup.net. That's M O D U P.net for Modafinil. Modup.net, code FTL. You can take control here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to the phones. Richard is in California. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Richard. Hi, Ian. Um, I was curious. I know you turned your property into a, a, a nonprofit church, so you don't have to pay property taxes. Uh, actually, I gave the property uh, to the church, but uh, that's the idea. Uh, that is one of the reasons involved in what's happening here because uh, members of the church – uh, support the idea of supporting the community, just not on a monopoly coercive basis. So, for instance, we have chosen to pay for services that we value, like you know, cleaning the roads or clearing the streets, and maybe some uh, fire and police services. But for instance, not the government schools. So, um, you know, it's not that we're paying nothing. 
Uh, it's just that we're not paying all of what they're demanding. How do you go about implementing a plan like that? Well, well you form a church. I mean, what do you mean? How do you go about go to that? church.shiresociety.com, and you will see that, uh, you know, we've made it possible for people to become members of the Shire Society Church. Or Your be... church should probably have some sort of a mission statement. There should be, you know, some tenets, uh, some, you know, beliefs, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I'm not sure if I really have... Am I answering your question? Well, I'm just curious because you had to do some kind of government paperwork to do it, correct? Uh, you're talking about the uh, the nonprofit status. So you don't need government paperwork to form your own church. It's your right, your freedom of religion to be able to form your own church, Richard, just by, by nature of the fact that you have the freedom, supposedly, in the United States Churches to believe— Churches came in, before the IRS. —to believe in whatever kind of God uh, you know that you want to and to have whatever belief but, system that, that you choose. So you don't have to ask any government permission to form a church, but if you do want to have some sort of thing that has nonprofit status, then you would have to likely form some kind of a nonprofit corporation with the state. Because otherwise they would just throw liens on the property. Well, you can't buy um, – just by, by forming a church doesn't give you the, right, the ability to buy property in the state system, right? Because the church is an idea, uh, just like the state is an idea. And the people who believe in the state, you know, they have certain rules that they, uh, they want to follow. And so um, in order to have the church own property, the church also has to have some way to interact in the system, which is sort of one of the reasons for having things like a nonprofit, a corporation that is a nonprofit. Does that make any sense? What I'm saying there? Yeah, it, it does, and that that's what I was looking for. Could you could you like maybe post something up with kind of just like a dummy's guide to doing it, or you know? Cause um, no, nope, I can't. Uh, there's all kinds of guides and you know uh, suggestions and ideas out there. Just look into you know starting a church or a free church, for instance. There's a whole free church movement, which is a group of churches who have realized that incorporating is probably not the best way to uh, to form their religious association because asking for permission from the state in order to exist seems like a really un religious, ungodly thing to do in that it puts the state in between God and the church, so to speak. So, Richard, I think you should look for uh, free churches and starting a free church and, you know, try to try to avoid the, the advice that suggests that you go out there and beg the government for permission, because there are churches that do that. In fact, most churches do that, which is one of the founding ideas behind the Shire Free Church, is that the people who are involved in the Shire Free Church are frustrated in a lot of cases with these sort of, for lack of a better term, state churches, uh, churches that are organized at the pleasure of the state that, uh, you know, they didn't create the church from the get-go on its own. They created it with the blessings of the state. They begged for permission in order to have a church. And I think that's coming at it from the the wrong perspective. Uh, and I thank you, Richard, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So the idea there being that you know you create the church, that's just something that you can do with people without having to ask anyone's permission. And I don't like the idea of asking the state for permission for anything. And uh, you know, putting the idea of the state, which is sort of like a false god to me, in between you know, real god, if you will, which I, of course I don't think is separate from us because I'm a panentheist. But the uh, the the Shire, Shire Free Church welcomes people of all religions, so you can be a Christian, a Muslim, um, you know, Quaker, etc., whatever whatever your preferences are, so long as you don't look at the state as God, so long as you don't uh, worship the state, and as long as you, you know, you're a peaceful person, you would be welcomed, I think, in the, in the Shire Free Church. Sounds right to me. Um, I, it, you know, a church is a form of organization. If, uh, you know, whatever, you've got to file a few pieces of paper here and there with the government, I would prefer... I, I don't ask for permission, but at times uh, we have uh, filed pieces of paper with them. Can a person be a member of the Shire Free Church without uh, living in this area? Like, can yeah, absolutely. Live far away? Yeah, absolutely. In the same way that a person can be a Shire Society signer, they can sign the declaration. Now, again, just because you've signed the declaration doesn't mean you're a member of the church. Those are two separate things, but in order to be in the church, you do have to be a Shire Society Declaration signer. Wow. So you do have to have that level of dedication to the ideas of freedom and and hopefully uh, and peace to mm -hmm. take you into the, the Shire Free Church. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know if I've answered the the question appropriately. Or... I don't think there is an easy guide to doing this because, yeah. uh, frankly, the government's going to stand in your way every opportunity they get, unless your church says the you know is is the um, you know the uh, Christ filled Holy Jesus Spirit uh, Church of uh, whatever then. They're going anything that's sort of new and different. They're going to stand yeah. in the way of, and that's what we're seeing happen with the Shire Free Church. The Shire Free Church has been denied the tax exemption on the church parsonage uh, that we have here because in we called ourselves activists at one well, point. Well, because they know we're they know we are activists, uh, and the tax assessment board here in activists town, may not start a church. Basically, that's what they said. I mean, she didn't use those terms exactly, but you're kind of paraphrasing what one of the tax assessors said when they denied the tax uh, exemption. So you might ask, uh, be asking yourself, well, okay, guys, if you don't like the asking permission, why did you ask for the tax uh, exemption? And the idea there was we, uh, the perspective from the church, the way that the, the letter was written to the tax assessors board was that we are doing this as a courtesy to them to give them the opportunity to grant the exemption so as to not create further conflict, right? Because we know how the state people operate. If you don't do what they say, and that is pay property tax, they're, they're going to steal that property from you, and then they're going to take it and they're going to sell it at an auction called a tax sale in order to get the money that they want for their property tax. And they're going to do that whether or not you call yourself a church. So the idea was, let's put this, let's put the ball in motion in their system, which is the, the reason why we have a nonprofit corporation. So we we can interact with these people. I don't want to, but you know the government. They demand that you interact with them. So that's why we have this nonprofit corporation, and so it filed for the tax exemption was was denied. And we often, and rather than uh, you know application and things like that, we'll we'll say we are filing this as a courtesy, as a courtesy to you your know, system. Yeah, things yeah. like that. Give them the opportunity to exit graciously from uh, c continuing to create conflict, which they haven't done. They're continuing to create conflict, and so next step is to go to court on this. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. 
Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here. 855-453-free. One man has been arrested for having sexual relations with his incapacitated wife. And we will see what the details are about that because there may be some disagreement in between the co-hosts on this issue. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, we've got Skype as well. You may Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Let's jump right back into your calls and thoughts. We have Daniel in northern minnesota listening to wnmt hey daniel hey guys how you doing welcome sir go ahead hey you guys we got you are you there daniel Uh uh-oh maybe he's in one of those northern minnesota cell dead zones we're going to try daniel back here in just a moment our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE well mark we've been teasing it all night here uh let's jump into the story from iowa is that right yeah raw story a republican state representative in iowa was arrested last week on a third degree sexual abuse charge for having sex with his wife after a court told him that she lacked the mental capacity to consent this is uh, according to the criminal complaint, uh, you know, on this date, uh, May the 5th, 14th, 2014, this fella um, was told by officials at the Concord Care Center that his wife, Donna Rayhorns, no longer possessed the mental capacity to consent to sexual relations. A little more than a month later, um, her daughter, uh, Susan Burns was made her mother's uh, temporary guardian after video surveillance captured the captured Ray Horns. This is the fella leaving his wife's room, discarding her underclothes in a nearby laundry hamper. Hmm. Donna Ray Horns roommate corroborated the video evidence by saying that on the same day he uh, that he discarded undergarments, he heard noises indicating to her that Ray Horns were having sex with his mentally incapacitated wife. Uh, apparently, the woman um, in question here died just a few days ago, uh, but this co- case is sort of in uh, in play. So mm-hmm. this isn't going to happen anymore, but um, it, Hopefully. It, it happened, right? <laughs> so, And is the allegation that it has happened on multiple instances? Um, yes, the allegation is this happened on multiple incidents, but he's only been charged for the one. So the executive director of the Iowa Coalition Against Sexual Assault said uh, it was elite, it was legal in Iowa for a man to have sex with his wife against her will, but that even with a special rape law in place, convictions are rare, especially with the victim incapable of testifying. Hold on, just to clarify what you said, I want to make sure I heard it correctly or you so, you said it correctly. You said it's legal in Iowa to have sex with your wife against her will. Executive director of the Iowa Coalition against the sexual uh, against a sexual assault, Elizabeth Barnhill, told the press citizen that until twenty oh, I'm sorry, I, I missed this entirely. Until twenty five years ago, it was legal in Iowa for a man to have sex against, with his wife against her will. Mm. Okay. Now I think that there's two like there. Okay, so I don't think that it's okay to have sex with anybody against their will. 
Good. That's where I'm coming down on this issue. However, this isn't sex against this woman's will. She Excuse asked for me? It? How can you make that claim? It She's be, incapacitated. She cannot speak. So she correct? has no will, so it's not against it, right? Well, she's Whoa. also not an inanimate object. That's true. <laughs> so. Wait a minute. Okay, so you're saying because she's essentially passed out or in a coma, uh, she can't be reached in any meaningful communicative way, that therefore she has no will? What no, does that mean? She has no will. That's correct. She has, uh, to the best of our knowledge. Did she have a will before she became incapacitated? Absolutely. Did, when she was. And when she did, she chose to marry this man, assuming, therefore, that she wanted to have sex with him. Excuse me. That's a big assumption. Yeah, that's a huge jump. Maybe she wasn't having sex with him at the time. Yeah, okay. First of all, every story I've ever heard about marriage, almost every one, is that sex goes down after people get married. So to suggest that when you marry somebody, you have some sort of open contract where you can just have sex with them anytime, is that what you're getting nope, at there, Nope, I'm Mark? not suggesting that at all, because you would the person would have to consent or not consent. But I think you do cross this sort of small, permeable barrier from the, uh, the that consent to sex is a no- for people you're not married with, like, mm-hmm. you know, that the, the the assumption that sex should be uh, a no with people you're not married to, to a, mm-hmm. uh, the assumption is that sex should be a yes to yeah. people you are married with. I agree with that. So, therefore, <laughs> if the person cannot, you know, is not capable to say, no, I didn't give consent, then therefore one should assume that they did give consent because they gave consent on their wedding day. Okay. Now, this is so, only hold on, really... Uh, an assumption based on people who are incapable of voicing, uh, you know, their, their consent. This seems or... crazy to me to suggest well, that it's because crazy you because had... it's unusual. Be- well, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is crazy is what you're suggesting here is that when you marry someone, all of a sudden you've given uh, just sort of carte blanche consent to sexual activity anytime except for when you say no. Right, so so what you're saying is, as soon as you marry somebody, that you can then begin uh, molesting that person in their sleep, and it's not molestation by your view because they have consented you're to married. your sexual activity. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. So what is? I don't know what molestation during their sleep is, but unwanted sexual touching is generally considered mol- well, how molestation. How do you know it's unwanted when they're they sleeping? They married you. They're sleeping in the same bed yeah. with you. It's wanted from that standpoint. If you <laughs> yeah, don't always. want somebody if to they touch don't you that want way, it, they'll sleep on the couch. Do Divorce them and mm-hmm. get out of their bed. Hmm. Wow. All right. Your thoughts are certainly welcome at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It may be both of the person's beds, and they may not have been, uh, come to an agreement on how to get out of uh, said I think to yet. some extent, now let's consider that this is a raw story, which means that it's published by Democrats. And uh, this fellow is a Republican. He's old. He's ugly. He's fat. And he's white. Okay, so to What's some extent, to it's okay anything? to They're hate on him. They're trying to make him. it a hit piece on him. And it's okay to hate on the dude. All right. Now my question it's is creepy, this. Dude. Let me ask you this. So you're talking about a young hot couple, right? So um, and they're and they're heterosexual, um, young hot mm. heterosexual couple here. The um, the man is uh, goes into a coma but has an erection. Uh, is is anybody going to give the woman this beautiful woman trouble for you know that one last dalliance with her um, you know incapacitated <laughs> husband? I think not. I think that beautiful women are going to get a pass on this one. Okay, you uh, you may be right about that, but it's still because it's creepy. a lot hotter when she does it <laughs> than when this guy does it. It's not really that much hotter. It's still creepy as hell. I mean, to I'm, be well, what, to okay, be having what's sex creep- with a, wait a second next so, to a corpse. I mean, we're talking about next to sex with corpses here. It's the next to that. Let me ask you this: What's so wrong about that? If I'm taking oh, care of my no, incapacitated wife in my one bedroom apartment where I have a, my bed, and then I invite in somebody else to have sex with me next to them, am, am I just? Saying Sentence to a life of sexlessness now? Can I? What, what's just creepier? Me having sex with somebody else next to my incapacitated wife, or me having sex Come with on, my incapacitated wife? Now you're being ridiculous. I'm no, not he's being gotta look, rid- He's got to look for sex somewhere, right? And if his so uh, get a human hotel his- room. I mean, get a two bedroom house. I mean, come on. Oh, uh, now I have to spend $180,000 yeah, well, to have sex. Yeah, you do have to spend money to have sex. You know that. Well, what's he supposed to get? A prostitute now? You know, his wife's out of commission. Sure. Would, would why she, not? Would That's she not want creepy. That? 
that, isn't that what what the wife would want? I mean, is she saying, oh, yeah, go sleep around with a prostitute. Get a bunch I of STDs and bring them back home, by the way. Look, it's certainly possible that you've had a conversation with your wife and or husband, because it could work both ways, as you're pointing out. You could have had a conversation, and the, the person could have told you, yes, if I'm ever asleep, you can do whatever you want to me. And if I am... <laughs> but uh, isn't yeah. that implicit in the <laughs> no, marriage contract no, is what my question is. I don't is. think it yes, is. Yes, yes it I is. think in the marriage contract that once you are in the marriage That's contract, and this is a state marriage contract mm-hmm. we're understanding is about... Is it in the contract? There are, no, no it not. is not. Okay, there are it's... certain uh, rules. Well, it is because yeah. it's the law. And so it's not because the, the state says, no, it's not. So what you're doing is you're supporting the state in this instance, getting involved in these people's marriage. Because this woman said to have and to hold for richer and poor, for better or for worse, and sickness and health. That means that he can have and hold her in her sickness. Does it not, sir? Have and hold her. Have as in have sexually is what you're saying. Uh, you def- you're it saying it came out of a guy holding anyway. the Bible. <laughs> have as a biblical term means yes, he had her. Oh, man. I still think it's creepy, man. I'm I I I not disagreeing with sure. creepy. Creepy, but permissible. <sighs> All right, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'm not saying I think the guy should have been arrested. I want to be clear with that. I'm not That's saying... because you don't think anybody should be arrested for anything. Well... That's not a dodge, sir. All right, let's continue here. Your calls are welcome. Michael Dean is with us. Uh, he is on Skype. Michael Dean, go ahead. Do we have a Michael Dean on Skype? Michael Dean going once? You know what? We may be having some technical difficulties. With is that our, what happened with the other caller? With our audio equipment. No, it is not the same thing. Different things have happened to our calls, and we will continue with them when we get it all ironed out. Coming up here in moments, and tell us what you think at 855-450-FREE. Does having a marriage contract mean that it's open season to do anything you want sexually to your partner when they have no consciousness whatsoever? I'm think- sorry. There's something wrong with that. In my opinion, eight fifty five to hold four fifty free. You can, I mean, it's almost as it's almost as creepy as sex with corpses. And there's news about that in the news as well. Coming up on Free Talk Live, hour number three on the way. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kids should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, August 18th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,298, silver opened at $19.54, and Bitcoin is trading around $462. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated. 
specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. In the news, violence erupted once more Sunday night in Ferguson, Missouri, as police accused protesters of firing shots and throwing Molotov cocktails at officers. The community has been the site of protests and clashes between police and community members since the August 9th shooting of 18-year-old Michael Brown. In the early morning hours of Monday, Missouri State Highway Patrol Captain Ronald Johnson held a press conference detailing what led officers to fire tear gas canisters before the midnight curfew began. Johnson said there was an unrelated shooting around 8.30 p.m. Shortly after the shooting, looting was reported at a local McDonald's and Domino's Pizza. Captain Johnson stated that a large group of protesters began making their way to a police command center before the curfew. Molotov cocktails were reportedly thrown at officers as well as gunshots. Are you struggling with chronic disease? Are you witnessing behavior or learning disabilities in your children or grandchildren? Or are you simply not feeling as good as you would like? Well, maybe it's what you're eating. The Medina Forum is hosting an event to overview the nutrition research of Dr. Weston A. Price and the principles of nourishing traditional foods. You'll learn about nutrient-dense diets, what foods to avoid for the best health, and which nutrients are essential. The event will be held Sunday, August 24th from 3 until 5 p.m. at the Medina Farm in Wharton, Texas. More information is available at thelibertybeat.com. On Wednesday, there will be a free magic show at Highland Mall on Airport Boulevard in Austin, Texas. There will be an unschooling and homeschooling meetup at the event running from 2 until 3 that afternoon. That is 6001 Airport Boulevard, Austin, Texas, where the event will happen. There will be free events all week put on by the fantastic Magic Camp performers. Learn more at magiccamp.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It. Live each Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Sunday, President Obama informed Congress that he authorized U.S. military airstrikes in Iraq to help Iraqi citizens take back the Mosul Dam from the Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS. A White House statement said failure could threaten the lives of large numbers of civilians, threaten U.S. personnel and facilities. The statement called the operations limited and said they were done at the request of the Iraqi government. On Friday, Texas Governor Rick Perry was indicted by a grand jury for two counts of abuse of power and coercion. Perry said the indictments were politically motivated and unwarranted. The charges stem from Perry vetoing $7.5 million in funding for a branch of the Travis County District Attorney's Office. Critics allege that Perry vetoed as a way to push Democratic District Attorney Rosemary Lindbergh out of office. Now Perry faces 5 to 99 years in jail if convicted of the first-degree felony. Over the weekend, Bitcoin prices hit a month-long low of just above $480. Some speculate the price drop is due to investors engaging in manipulative investment tactics through the Bitfinex trading platform. Nonetheless, those who expect Bitcoin to continue to increase in price see the current dip as an excellent opportunity for buying. For those interested in adding to their portfolio, Brave New Books at 1904 Guadalupe Street in Austin is now host to a Bitcoin ATM, where you can purchase Bitcoin in a safe and secure manner. To keep up with the latest in Bitcoin prices, visit thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high-fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 18th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Many thought that a politician with a publicly inebriated lifestyle would be unelectable. But Dave Tillis has proved them wrong, winning over voters by loudly rambling on about issues they care about. Everybody's got to know that drugs are Americans, and we love America! And we want to make it awesome! Oh my God, let's do this! Till 
Trump's total fearlessness and lack of inhibition seem to speak to voters. This week, those supporters had something to celebrate as Senator Tillis proposed his first piece of legislation, the All Bus Stops Should Have Shelters Bill. But does that mean you deserve to wake up in the snow? Hell no. Let's make a shelter on all bus stops. Ow! This idea is genius! This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 as we launch in to the third hour here. With you tonight in the studio, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And Derek J. and Mark are taking a position a little bit different from me on this one. Now, I don't want to put words in y'all's mouths, but Mm -hmm. let me just recap here briefly the story as I understand it. A state representative in Iowa has been charged with some sort of criminal act. I wasn't sure. What was it? Sexual assault? I didn't have that. It was a third degree... it's third degree sexual, sexual something. Assault. I'm, I'm going to guess sexual assault. Third degree but... means pretty minor, by the way. Okay. So charged with this, arrested. Third degree sexual abuse. Abuse, okay. Um, anyway, the idea was that he had apparently been seen coming from a room in which his incapacitated wife was, and he had- t- This like man her- had sex with his wife. Did he admit to that? Okay, I didn't know that. But that it, 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 I think that at this point- uh, I would, let's assume that for the story. That's what they believed, and that's why they arrested him. But it and shouldn't be too hard to find that out, right? Well, I, 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 yeah, I guess they would do some sort of an inspection. Sure. Oh, we're going to inspect this, inspect I, this lady. Is she going to consent to that? Crush no, legions certainly without not. her consent. And I don't support that. That's why I say I don't support getting the government <laughs> involved in this. I just think it's creepy to have sex with somebody who cannot be there to actively consent. But what you're saying is, Mark, and Derek, you seem to be agreeing with him, yes. is that in or, in that by getting married, that changed the active consent, or the, the rather the lack of active consent, to active consent. Yeah, it meaning, makes the default position sex is wanted. If the Meaning that if the person cannot answer the question or has not expressed a preference to this matter like if they've never said don't ever have sex with me if i'm in a coma then you know then the presumption is they're willing to have sex with you when they're in a coma yeah yes and i'm it seems creepy to me now now do you guys both agree that it's creepy to do that or would you do that if your lover or your you know your partner for life has uh, been put into a coma would you have sexual relations? I don't know. I'm, I'm not in that circumstance. That but there's a certain beauty to me to uh, to continuing to, you know, remain, f- uh, you know, keep the fidelity going in the relationship instead of running out and getting a hooker or suffering. Would my wife? I mean, if I'm not consenting to my suffering. Would my wife be like, "Oh yeah, that's exactly what I'd want you to do. Suffer away." Mm. I don't know about this creepy thing. This is just something you've created for so yourself. You're saying you don't think it is creepy. I don't. I thought you I don't said think that it was creepy earlier. I'm okay. sorry. I'm not disputing the creepy or creepy thing. I think that's what I've said. I'm not disputing it because uh-huh. that's your opinion, and your yep. opinion generally stinks. <laughs> um, but what I think this is is a decision between two people, and that when somebody gets married, that mm. it should be assumed that the decision they've made is to have sex with the person they got married to. Let's bring right. Michael Dean in here uh, for this discussion, and Deborah, uh, the uh, the lady of the Dean household. Uh, you guys are on Free Talk Live via Skype. Mew. Well, hello. <laughs> hey, guys. What would you want to add you know, in I, here? Well, a couple of things. Uh, I think uh, while I agree with Mark that uh, being married to someone should create an assumption that you are willing to have sex with them, uh, that is not necessarily the legal standpoint in a lot of uh, jurisdictions because otherwise you couldn't have uh, prosecutions for marital uh, rape. And they do exist. Well, the, but, so uh, I think marital, that's a different story. That's when somebody has said no. Um, like, I do believe that you can choose, you cannot consent in a marriage. I just, this is the underlying assumption. I think it would only apply ah, in a circumstance okay. where somebody is incapacitated in a coma or something like that. I'm not exactly sure where necrophilia fits in here, but it's <laughs> certainly getting a little weirder. <laughs> Yeah. No. And I have to say, I agree with you also on the uh, 
Why would, you know, if it were me, would I want Michael to suffer? No, I wouldn't. And if his choice to relieve his suffering was to have sex with me, I want to get it on the record right now. My name is Deborah Jean Dean, and uh, it is August the 18th. And should the occasion ever arise wherein I am incapacitated and unable to actively consent that uh, Michael is welcome to have sex with me anytime he wishes. Now, Ian, and does I, everyone I, in, in America have to do this? I can go. As you Who pointed knows? out, Mark, it can work both ways. The uh, woman could have sex with a turgid man. Uh, if <laughs> yes, she and I, I am cons- – this is Michael Dean, and I am consenting should the need arise, uh, the situation arise, <laughs> that she can do the same with me. Neither of us – I am not under duress. Are you under duress, baby? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like it. And, uh, yeah, we just uh, – you know, great that's thought beautiful. Do you still feel it's, creepy? No, like, that's beautiful. They just shared a lovely moment with us in the world. No, no, not with Ian. That. Ian thinks their love is creepy. <laughs> No, I'm asking. I didn't say that. Well, okay, I do think that is creepy. But uh, yes, I'm asking you if you would think it would be creepy. Like, for instance, I have been given permission by a lover in the past to have sex with the person while they were sleeping. And I said, I won't do it because it, that's creepy to me. Like, personal preference. Yeah. I, and I think that's it's just yeah. your personal preference. I think it's, I think it's exactly. weird because I would want to, to me, about a sexual encounter is about the other person having pleasure as well. And if they, you know, if they're not there to feel it, <laughs> then what's the point? How do it you doesn't know? doesn't make sense to me. Maybe this woman in a coma can feel it. Maybe That's she's grateful. Maybe she's been yeah. trying to get some That's, and yeah. has had a hard time. You know, you make a good point there. Maybe uh, maybe that's what she's been waiting for. Maybe she hates it. I mean, the guy's a politician. <laughs> exactly. That's one of my concerns is that maybe she maybe she got put into a coma before she could let it be known that she did not want to be this sort of inanimate sexual object for mm. this man. I mean, I'm sorry. That's I mean, Something's wrong it, with that. Isn't most of America kind of in a coma with politicians having sex with us? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael Dean, for the call tonight. Appreciate that. That's Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, by the way. Freedomfiends.com, his website. Let's go to Richie. He's in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live, Richie. Hey, I was calling about the Shire Free Church. Okay, sure. Um, and your, yeah, your legal issues with that. There's a really good book. It's called uh, Wicca and the Law. Um, you might want to check out it talks about the leak because uh, Wiccans have been going through their own legal battles with the government claiming they're not a religion. And I bet they like have. That. Yeah, it's sort of new. This yeah. is the problem with being new. Yeah. Because um, I bought the book because I was kind of concerned about, um, you know, some nut job neighbor calling the police, you know, you know, trying to have social services take my kids away. But, um, but I, uh, because Ian, you're a pantheist, am I right? Oh uh, yeah, panentheist. Okay, that's technically a pagan religion. Uh, pagan's kind of a broad term that I, uh, it they it basically means any religion that's not one of the big three monotheistic faiths. So there are um, rights groups that actually defend people in these cases. Yeah, well, you know, the Shire Free Church has actually reached out to a number, the Shire Free Church Monadnock specifically, has reached out to a number of uh, rights groups like the ACLU, the ACLJ, as well as the Rutherford Institute, and uh, either they are just too busy to be concerned, concerning themselves with these matters, or they don't think that, uh, they don't think it's a good case. Uh, I think that you know we're going to have to take this on our own, and that's the that's the direction the church is is going in at this point. That it appears that the people of the legal profession uh, are not interested in in this particular matter, and that's that's unfortunate because it's a pretty it seems to me to be a pretty crystal clear uh, freedom of religion case. Of course, we're talking about the Shire Free Church, which you can learn more about at church.shiresociety.com. And actually, it's not just the Shire Free Church. There's also the Peaceful Assembly Church. Uh, Derek Jano, uh, have you been to Grafton just recently? Were you up there? For, no, for I've never court? been to Grafton, but uh, I love their uh, what they've got going on with their church. Right. They do. They actually have a church building, like an actual yes. steepled roof kind it's of beautiful. church. beautiful. Like a classic New England style uh, church. And, and a piece of that you can see from like Google Earth or something. They've got in the, their parking lot. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, they were denied uh, in their Aww. tax exemption, and the Church of the Sword was also denied. So, uh, activist churches around New Hampshire, not just the Shire Free Church, are all under attack, and uh, and it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not a cheap thing to go to court. Uh, one attorney told us that it would probably cost tens of thousands of dollars if he were to be willing to take the case, and he wasn't so sure he wanted to take the case. So there you go. Uh, Richie, anything else you want to share? Uh, yeah, just uh, that book has a lot of uh, 
landmark cases in there that you might want to cool. check out. Cool, and that's Wicca and, and the Law. Thanks for the recommendation, Richie. I appreciate hearing from you. Of course, we'll keep you in the loop as the Shire Free Church case continues to develop. Uh, is freedom of religion actually respected by the government? I mean, we've certainly found that freedom of speech and, uh, you know, your right to privacy, none of these freedoms are respected by the government. So I'm not expecting to have much success at this because they seem to just ignore all of their own rules in their own constitution. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network Program Guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live. Bring up anything right here toll free at 855-450 free. Whether it's the latest on Ferguson, Missouri, where apparently the curfew has been lifted, but the National Guard or the State uh, State Guard are expected to be in town as of sometime today. Uh, protests have been happening in St. Louis at the governor's office. So the situation there continues to develop. We're also talking about a state representative in Iowa who's been arrested. Now, I don't think he should have been arrested for this, but arrested for having sex with his incapacitated wife. Mark says that's not creepy at all. I say that's pretty creepy, and Derek J says creepy but permissible, kind of like a kinky sex thing that you're not personally into. Right. Right. So, like I said, I don't think it's permi- I, I think it's permissible. I'm, I'm with you on this one, Derek J. I think that, you know, people can do what they want. It's their relationship. But I find it pretty weird. Anyway, let's continue on here. Everybody's got their thing, though. Well, you know, some people like uh, sex with amputees. That's right. Um, Let me ask you this. If I lost my leg, do you think my wife is creepy for having sex with me? No, because you could actually consent and, you know. No, 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 no. no. We're talking about sex with amputees here. Um, You know, plenty of people think that a amputee fetish is creepy, right? No, I don't think that's... I, you don't I mean, think that plenty of people think that? I don't, know I, what, I don't know what people think. I have no idea. I'm not going to go out on that limb. You don't think some people do? Everybody's got their thing. I mean, whatever. Everybody's got what thing? The difference between having sex with an amputee, whether it's a human torso a or somebody missing a leg, is that the amputee can actually communicate with you. They could indicate whether or not they were in the mood, for instance. Or she did communicate with him. She... Got married that's to him. That's the point on which mm-hmm. we uh, we disagree. You think that's some sort of open uh, invitation to sex anytime you want it. And no, I that's find, not that what I said at all. Really Thanks weird. for twisting my words. I really yeah. appreciate it every time you do that. Yeah. But if you're that's looking you're to doing. get cryptocurrencies, <laughs> you can go to ExpressCoin.com because they, they've got all the cryptocurrencies there that you may want. Not all of them. Many of the cryptocurrencies you may want. There's hundreds of cryptocurrencies. But they've got Bitcoin, which is what you probably heard about in the news. They've also got the... The uh, the much vaunted Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, they're available in Canada and the United States. All you have to do is go to ExpressCoin.com, use a money order, check, or wire transfer. You can even make a deposit at a local credit union that has shared branching, and you'll have your Bitcoins within a business day. It's ExpressCoin.com. You can do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. They're completely legal, inexpensive, fast, and easy to use. Use coupon code FTL, that's FTL as in Free Talk Live, to get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin at no fee. That's not just Bitcoin, cryptocurrency of your choice. At no fee, it's coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. All right, so toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Uh, someone has commented that uh, that you're trolling me, Mark. I don't think so. I think you really believe this. I do. Yeah. I, I think that uh, you took a vow on your wedding day to have and to hold for sickness and in health. Yeah. And what that says to me is, is that, look, part of the marriage deal is sex. Now, not sex whenever it is that one person wants it and the other one doesn't, I still think you have the ability to opt out. But by getting married, you essentially opt in. So therefore, in situations where somebody's incapacitated, I don't think that they, in a coma, they don't want their spouse suffering from a lack of sex. They probably don't want their spouse running around and getting a, you know, with whomever. So yeah, I think the vast majority of people, that should be assumed that the vast majority of people would say yes in this circumstance. So therefore, a third degree felony, not appropriate. Well, that much we can agree upon. Criminal charges, I don't think, are appropriate for this. Uh, Let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. And let's, unless I would say, with the exception, with an exception, unless the person specifically said, "I don't want you to ever do this," and Mm -hmm. then they did it, then they would be violating the agreement. I would agree with that. If they, if somebody said, "Whoa, whoa," my wife said, "No, never, that absolutely not." Let's go to Greg. He's in New York, and you can bring up anything you want. Hey, Greg. Hey guys, uh, I like when you disagree with each other. It's refreshing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I actually had an interesting topic I wanted to call in about. Um, two days ago, uh, you know, I started noticing that these Coke cans. Have you guys noticed this Coke cans with people's names on them? Yeah, yes. what's that about? Uh, yeah, I was wondering, and I posted that on Facebook. Um, and like, you know, there was a kid looking for a Coke can for like half an hour because he couldn't find his name. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I posted on Facebook, what's up with this? And uh, then a friend of mine commented that, hey, I saw already like five posts on Facebook about this. It's a great marketing campaign uh, because people are posting on Facebook. 
so I looked it up, um, and it's an interesting story. Apparently, um, soda companies are suffering uh, you know, lack of demand because every year Americans are becoming more health conscious and drinking less soda. Really? And so, yeah, it's an interesting trend in the last 10 years, actually. That I was, you know, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, I drank less soda than I did 10 years ago. There you go. Uh, In fact, I think if Americans are making healthier choices voluntarily, that is a great thing versus, let's say, uh, the soda ban in uh, New York City on the size of the containers. So Um, wait, just to clarify, so these soda cans are aluminum cans with names printed on them by the the canning company? Yes. So they have cans that say Ian. Derek's. Sorry, I meant bottles, but yes. But they, well, they have, I mean, yeah, they have bottles like and cans. Yeah, it'll say Coke with Ian, you know. Yeah. And So they're trying to personalize the drinking experience? I haven't found one that says Big Daddy Rhino so. Schwantz yet. <laughs> oh, wait, are that's people the idea, is custom it? ordering these no, things? No, they're in the stores and they see like, oh, hey, my name's on that. And then I they'll see. buy the soda because it's like, oh, it's like the with chains. Bobby. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but here is where it gets not really creepy, but just interesting of how American capitalism works. The names that they're putting on it are a result of the soda company saying, hey, we are getting lower and lower demand for sodas. So we're going to try to reform our image. We're going to make slightly smaller containers, and we're going to put teenagers, popular teenagers' names on these Cokes. Mm-hmm. This is what they're doing in order to entice, uh, and, and maybe later they'll run some more campaigns aimed at teenagers, um, in order to entice kids and teenagers to start drinking Coke again. So what Clever. you're saying is I can't go and buy a Mildred Coca-Cola or an <laughs> Esther. But you're very likely to be able to get a Phoebe. No, Phoebe. Like a Justin. Well, You'll get Justin. Brittany, Justin. How about yeah. Chloe, come on. I mean, these, these names are hip. Yeah, I guess you're right. So, Greg, uh, so, th- so, so what you're just yeah. saying that this is a cynical move by the companies? I mean, where are you coming from on this? I think it come. It actually brought me to a very uh, funny, another funny uh, libertarian conundrum, which is like, okay, if you're voluntarist, or if uh, I'm, am I pronouncing that right, voluntarist? Or, There's two uh, different or, ways to pronounce it. There's voluntarist, which is spelled differently, and then voluntarist, which is spelled the way you're pronouncing it. So yes, you're fine. Cool. So if you basically are in favor of a free market where people rationally make choices, but at mm-hmm. the same time admit that at certain ages. Uh, people are not yet ready to really think uh, in health-conscious ways or, or rational ways necessarily, what you would call rational, but rather are more impulse-driven, like kids or you know, uh, tweens or teenagers. And if a company is marketing unhealthy products to, tho- to specifically going after that demographic, would you be in favor of laws um, restricting companies from doing that in your city, say, or would you just wait until the damage is done to then sue them later. Like, Let's talk about that. Choice. Let's talk about that coming up here in a moment. If you can hang on, it's Greg. a great question. We'll bring you back in just a moment. Protecting the children from them darn junk foods. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's I love questions like this. I love callers that bring up sort of interesting things to get you thinking. That's a good intellectual question. We'll come back with more of Greg and your calls and thoughts. Derek J's already fired up on this one. 855 450 free. You take control here on Free Talk Live. More on the way. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. It takes a lot of courage to face your own death, but I'm glad I finally did. See, I was putting off getting life insurance to protect my family, even though I knew it was important. Then my neighbor's husband died. I watched her struggle emotionally and financially. It really made me face reality. If my husband died, how would I pay the mortgage, the car payments, or keep up the life the kids and I had? I realized I needed to get us life insurance right away. So I called AIG Direct. In less than five minutes, I had a quote. I was shocked at how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. I feel so much better knowing my family has protection. Call AIG Direct right now for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you can save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-463-7479. That's 1-800-463-7479. 1-800-463-7479. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippie! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control right here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we had Greg on the line in New York. He dropped off during the break. I hope we can get him back uh, to continue the conversation we were having about soda pop and uh, sort of the what he was describing as uh, American capitalism. We'll get back into that if we get a chance. Our toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. And, uh, you know, you can still comment on the sex with your incapacitated spouse issue or the latest in Ferguson. You've got the National Guard rolling into Ferguson, Missouri, apparently today. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you care about online privacy, check out ProXPN. They are the ones who are the sponsors of our phone lines here, and ProXPN should be. It's an appropriate sponsorship because they're a communications company. They want to protect your communications, unlike your internet service provider who seems to be like an open book. If the cops come to your ISP, there's a good chance they're going to turn over your info because, well, they've been likely logging all the websites you visit and all the search terms you enter for, in some cases, as long as five years. You can put a stop to that by grabbing Pro XPN's free software, and you can get it from Mac, iOS devices, Android devices, Windows, and you can even get it hooked up on Linux. It's just a little bit of a different setup there. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can get started there for free, but when you're ready to upgrade to premium, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to. You can even privately torrent with Pro XPN Plus, get past regionally blocked websites, and you can do it all with a 50% off annual price discount. Use this code, FTL50, 
and you'll get the price down to about 5 bucks a month with their annual account. That's FTL50. Or save even more by paying with Bitcoin. This is kind of a theme among some of our advertisers. You pay less with Bitcoin. You use this code, FTLBTC, you'll save 62% off the price of an annual account with that code at proxpn.com slash FTL. Go there, get started for free, and then jump up to the premium account with code FTL50 for cash or FTL BTC for Bitcoin and get some pretty deep discounts on those annual accounts. We actually do have Greg back here, thank goodness, uh, calling from New York. And Greg, you had uh, you know brought in this issue of Coca-Cola apparently is putting names on people's soda cans. You're saying that soda drinking is down, uh, that they're trying to reel people back into this by putting names apparently of teenagers, popular teenage names, on Coke cans. And your question was something about, and I, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so please rephrase it, but the que question was something mm -hmm. about in an ideal libertarian uh, place, would there be some sort of some support, at least among the hosts of the show, and maybe our listeners as well, if you're going to open it up to anybody's response here, uh, would there be some sort of support for laws ostensibly protecting young people and teenagers? It, was that essentially what you were asking? Yeah, protecting them from making uh, choices that an adult uh, would probably not make. And just to make it stronger, let's say it's not coke, but drugs uh, that might harm uh, the child, get them addicted. Um, and basically are marketed specifically uh, to get the uh, the children and teenagers uh, addicted. Well, there's a case that I think that's probably worth mentioning here is the Camel Cigarette Joe Camel ads. Now, I know you said you're, um, you are you moved from another place to here to the United States, and uh, you may not be aware of this, but there were some cartoons. In the 80s, there were cartoons, mm -hmm. literally little comic strips you could get in, the, uh, in a package of Camel Cigarettes. Hmm. And... I thought they were interesting when I was young. I collected these uh, these comics. Who were the characters, like Joe Camel? Joe Camel and some stuff. I don't really okay. remember any of them. I just remember collecting mm. them. But friends smoked, and I got their uh, comic strips. I had no desire to smoke that I know of be based on this, but um, I liked the comics. And I suspect that there were probably some people— This well, brought this the attention of cigarettes to young people, right? And so it was. they were doing their jobs. And so that's kind of the question is, is let, let's let's lay it out there. Forget drugs. Uh, tobacco itself is the biggest killer, sort of consensual killer on the planet. Um, you know, why not that one? And so I would say, no, um, I don't think there should be any laws over this. Parents have been do doing a reasonably good job of keeping uh, people have been keeping a, doing a good job, mostly through pressure, peer pressure, and societal pressure, keeping cigarettes and now sodas. You said that uh, the drinking of sodas is going down. So we're getting the results we want. Why have laws to get more of the results that you want? Yeah, I'm on board uh, with that, Mark. In fact, I don't know, I don't remember who I was listening to. I don't know if it was today or last night. Maybe it was even the Freedom Fiends. I'm not sure. I've been listening to a lot of LRN.FM recently, and it's all kind of been uh, blending together. But there was some sort of discussion about the idea that, you know, in, was it Scotland or something where there's no drinking age or very low drinking age? Ireland can, has no drinking age. In theory, walk up to the bar and as long as you can stand at the bar, you'll be, you could be served. But one of the things that was being said, this was Freedom Fiends. You yes. Were, yeah. You were talking with uh, your co-host Randy last night. That's right. Can you recap that? Because you'll do a better job than uh, than I will. Well, he was it. basically saying that in the town where he grew up. Uh, was it Ireland? where? I am not certain where he grew up, but he was saying. Okay. Okay. that uh, it would have been impossible for him as a young person to walk up to the bartender and say, I'll have a Guinness, you know. As a five-year-old or ten-year-old or something. As a kid, because yeah. it was a different kind of society where people looked out for their community and they would, like, he, it was, uh, it was different. It was not about laws, per se. It was about the type of community that he lived in, where people were saying, I wouldn't want my kid drinking, so I'm not going to serve this kid. Well, right. No and, law was necessary. And, yeah, that was kind of my point, was that if, uh, and, I, and I don't think that was necessarily a statement about the past. I think that was more of a statement about, period. Like, a five-year-old walks into a bar, you're going to have a tough time finding the bartender who's willing to find, serve that person. But what we find is, is when you pass laws on marijuana and that sort of thing, that kids consume more. Mm -hmm. Teenagers consume yeah. more marijuana 
when it's illegal and consume right. less when it's legal. All of a the sudden, drinking soda out. will be really cool. So when here's the it's question outlawed. I have for you, Greg: Do you want more kids to drink soda? Go ahead and pass your law. Unfortunately, you're going to have to ask that question of the universe because Greg dropped off the line. He must have been having some sort of cell phone yep. difficulty. There well, this is break. and this is sort of the, the the difference between the statist mentality and the liberty oriented mentality. Because, you know, the statist asks, well, should we pass a law? It the, presumes the laws will do what you're intending them to right. do in the first place. I mean, place. all the best, all the all the good intent has led us to where we are, where, you know, there's fires in the streets of Ferguson. Well, so the it comes question, back to the creativity that you were talking about earlier, Derek J. And if you can't think of creative ways to stop people from drinking or smoking cigarettes or whatever, then violence is not a, an acceptable solution. Yeah, who says to themselves, you know, boy, I wish kids uh, would drink water instead of soda. Maybe I should punish those people who drink <laughs> soda. I mean, maybe I should hit them or throw them in a cage. I mean, some water that's boarding, you, that'll help. Right, well, that's what you're asking when you're asking to introduce a law. You're saying, well, I should ha I involve this huge violent gang in this situation to, to solve this problem of kids drinking soda. Oh, but it's okay, Derek J. They won't put the kids in jail they'll only go after the dealers yeah that's right it's only the pushers well I, that's how it works with the war on drugs right but then the kids will get the soda mm -hmm. well I, it's gonna be ki the and kids then the kids will, will sell the soda the kids will market it to the mm -hmm. kids and did you all do that in school i remember when uh i remember when oh, yeah. i was in sixth grade i think it was tear jerkers were the hot thing these are uh, a gum type that has very very kind of sour coating on the outside and the Publix, a uh, grocery chain down in Florida, were, s were selling in the deli these large bags of these tear jerkers. And the different colors would go for different prices. <laughs> and, of course, it was totally against the, s the rules of the school to be selling these things. I mean, there would be likely some very upset parents if they found out that their kids were being sold candy while they were at school, which is why in a lot of uh, jurisdictions, just having a vending machine with candy in it can be very, very uh you know, controversial. I sold cigarettes in high school. Hey, really? Jeez, you you were the bad kid. Um, <laughs> we had we would do Jolly Ranchers and things like that. There was always some candy that people would want at school, mm -hmm. and somebody dealing the candy. I don't somebody know how was they bring it in to Mountain do it. Dew one year, but you knew it. Yeah. I don't. I, so does I don't think we're ever done because you're just sort of carrying it around. They're so right. obvious. I mean, a Jolly Rancher you can slide up underneath your watch band if you need to. You know. <laughs> Right. So the point being that if you prohibit something, whether it's something for kids or something for adults, Do you remember it's going to go underground. Do you remember cinnamon toothpicks? Loved the cinnamon toothpicks. It was a craze about those yeah. for like six months in middle school for me. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody made a batch. I don't know if I, I made a batch of them once and put too much cinnamon oil on them. So when you put them in your mouth, your lips would turn all red and your face would break out in a rash. Is somebody <laughs> like that? Yeah, it was kind of dangerous. Uh, you had to watch yourself with that cinnamon oil. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. 
or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We have enough time to get your call in. If you dial in right now, toll free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, there are ways to do it. And one of them is to become a Free Talk Live amplifier. You can also shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. Enter in through Amazon there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon US, Canada. Uh, you just go and get your shopping done. Get what you're looking for, and Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. When you start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. And don't forget to go and check out Derek J and his variety of media efforts. And there are more than I can ever really recall, Derek. You're involved <laughs> in so much right now. You've got your own yeah. show. Actually, two kind of of your own shows. Yeah, Peace News Now, Bitcoin Talk Show, and Six Ad World. Three. That's right. Three of your own show. And then you're also doing regular fill-in work and co-hosting with the Freedom Fiends. Yeah, most well. Sunday nights uh, I host Freedom Fiends from 1 to 3 a.m. Eastern. And also, let's see, what else are you up to? Uh, the the on... Bitcoin group on Fridays. Now, how uh, is that I... different from the Bitcoin show? Well, Bitcoin talk show is uh, totally different. It's a call-in show, and it's international, so people can share whatever's on their mind about uh, Bitcoin stuff. Like, there's a Bitcoin talk forum, and that's the huge place where all Bitcoin the talk. Bitcoin org, that discussion place? happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so when people invent a new coin, that's where they announce it. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted Bitcoin talk show to be a place where it's like media interaction instead of just this boring forum. Mm -hmm. I want to bring people in on Google Hangouts and Skype on phone lines and let's all have a real conversation about what's going on in the Bitcoin world. So so Bitcoin Talk Show is accessible from DerekJ.me? Yes, it is. And it's also at BitcoinTalkShow.com. You Excellent. can see all the past episodes there and uh, call in on How Wednesdays. How many are you up to? How many? It's a weekly We've show. We've done 20 episodes so far. Awesome. Almost a half a year. Yeah. Very exciting. So DerekJ.me, go there and get the latest 
on what Derek is up to. He's also doing regular video blogging, I should point out. I mean, almost on a daily basis, if not more than once a day. Yep. You're recording videos sort of chronicling your life here in Keene as an activist. Yeah, lots of stuff's been happening. I've been denied a concealed carry license. I was recently attacked by some street thugs. So it's an interesting Truman Show-esque type thing. It's like a, a daily <laughs> continuance of Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Yeah. Almost. I mean, if you've seen the movie at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com and you, you've wondered what's happening now... Uh, checking out Derek J's YouTube channel would be the best way to do that, and mm -hmm. that's your raw, your new raw channel where you're posting everything you do. Yeah, that's right? Derek J Live. But again, the portal for everything is at DerekJ.me. Derek .me. Perfect. All right, so there you go. You can do that more with Derek at DerekJ.me, and your calls and thoughts certainly welcomed here. In fact, uh, Derek, I know you had a, a short story tonight that I yes. think was a similar to one to one that I had in my show prep for a couple days ago about a mom who's been arrested for using a naughty word. Yeah, that's right. Um, Reason.com reports about a woman who was arrested for cursing in a grocery store. According to a witness, Danielle Wolf cursed at her two little girls last week because they were squeezing the bread at a Kroger supermarket. Mm. We've all been there. What did she say? She said, uh, stop squishing the effing bread. I guess they should stop squishing the effing bread then. <laughs> well, they did. But uh, Wolf said she was uh, talking not to her children, but to her husband, who <laughs> was recklessly tossing frozen pizzas into their shopping cart. We've all hmm. been there. Yeah. Either I guess way, he should stop squishing the effing bread. <laughs> either way, she committed a misdemeanor. So police had no choice but to handcuff her in front of her family. Wow. And a cart her off to the station. What is the misdemeanor exactly? Uh, disorderly conduct, of course. Didn't you know? Or so they say. Uh, the NBC station in Augusta, Georgia, police say, quote, um, the, because the law is on the books, they have to enforce it. The law in question defines disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor punishable by a maximum fine of $500 and up to 30 days in jail to include, quote, uttering while in a state of anger in the presence of another... Any bawdy, lewd, or obscene <laughs> words or epithets. So once any. A yes, any yeah. at all. So once a shopper is offended by Wolf's salty language, mm. uh, complain to Officer Travis Smith, his hands were tied. And he had to arrest him. Had to do it. Had no discretion. Couldn't exercise that at all. Ridiculous. And uh, the complainant, whose name was blacked out mm. in the police report, said that the cursing reminded her of her traumatic childhood. So that's, uh, you know, wow. all right. Then she later apologized to Wolf by phone. Saying wait, wait, wait. The complaining party apologized to the woman who was arrested? I don't know if I'm following all that's the names. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. Got it. She apologized to Wolf, saying she did not expect her to be arrested. Uh. Yet, according to the police report, when Smith asked the scandalized shopper if she wished to testify in court about the incident, she said that she would. Only then did Smith proceed to arrest Wolf. So there we go. Well, I, I can kind of see how a person might not have expected what happened to happen. Right. You know, like you can be like, sure, officer, if that if you're gonna give her a ticket, a ticket or whatever, I guess I can do that. But like, you know, it can be, it's. It's one thing to talk about something happening to somebody. It's another thing entirely to see the situation. Yeah. Oh, this woman's being arrested in front of her two kids. I wonder what that's going to do to their psyche. And it's all yeah. because of you, because of what you did, lady. You called the police on this lady, and I guess she felt a little bit guilty after the fact. Yeah. Uh, people well, don't realize big, what they're doing. Made a big mistake by uh, passing off the responsibility. Here she is. She had right. an opportunity to speak you know, person to person, have she a real conversation about, hey, let's, you know, would you mind keeping your language clean? We've got kids around here or something like that. That's, that would have been all she had to have said. Yeah, but instead she weaseled out, wanted to uh, take away her own self-responsibility and pawn off the responsibility onto yeah. some cop. And, uh, you know, I, cowardice. Wish, I wish that people would remember when they invoke the police that they're calling a criminal gang with, with guns to use violence to address a situation. And people like, don't that's understand. They don't understand what uh, the likely outcome outcome is going to be i don't they, maybe they think the police officer is going to be some sort of a negotiator and come in and have a chit chat with somebody 
But I can't believe you use that kind of effing language in front of your kid. It's disgusting. So, right. The reality <laughs> is a lot of cops are very profane themselves in the way they handle the Go rest of us. Go see some videos from Ferguson. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, you know, you're, you're lucky if you call the police and they don't violently attack somebody or shoot a dog. I guess there weren't any dogs around to be shot in the, uh, the you know, in the grocery store in this particular instance. But people don't realize that even if the officer were to just write her a ticket, that's still an arrest. She's still being uh, restricted in her freedom. She's still obligated to show up at court, obligated to pay whatever the demands are, obligated to do whatever they're t uh, demanding of her. And so by, by making that phone call and bringing the police involved in this situation, she has absolutely sicked them on this woman and she can't control it's like you you know you pull the, the old story you pull the fire alarm and you can't control what the firemen do when they mm -hmm. show up and you know start hacking away at things with axes or whatever unfortunately it seems to be a situation of slave on slave on slave violence because there's more uh oh boy. Be, yeah a wolf who is due in court september 12th even apologized to the woman who turned her in saying she would never say that word in public again that's such a sad lesson to be learned, in my opinion. Like, well, didn't, uh, so now do we have a situation where both people have apologized to each other? Yes, and the state can, will continue to bring charges. Yeah, this is another instance where it's uh, you get to see right. So if there's a victim here, and I'm not sure who the victim is, um, it's certainly not the police officer, and or, or the people he works for, mm -hmm. the people of the state of whatever have not been harmed here. And so the suggestion that somehow the money should go to the courts and this woman should be drugged through the courts. Five hundred dollars. It doesn't make any sense. They're gonna get they're gonna get some money out of this. And they didn't they weren't wronged. Yeah, no one was wronged here. Uh it's it's weird that the person wasn't able to even say something to the woman. It, she could she had to say something to a police officer. It's cowardly. So weak. Well, you know, I, I'm sorry she had whatever encounters she had when she was a kid that were damaging to her. But right. the idea of restricting free speech, I think, is a is a problem. Now, you could, of course, point out that this wasn't a, a, a public forum. This was a grocery store, and the grocery store may not want to have their customers in there cursing and causing a scene. In which case, the solution is, again, not to call the police, but to simply, you know, maybe reach out to, if you're, a, you know, if you want to be a busybody, at the very least, you could reach out to the store manager and say, there's customers here who are doing things that are making me uncomfortable. I'll give you an example of, of when I've actually done something like this. And I don't like snitching, uh, but I was approached by a panhandler on the way into a Publix in South Florida once. And I know that if I had a store, I would not want a panhandler hanging out out front of the store. So no. I, I let the manager know. Know, hey, you've got a panhandler out there. Just wanted to give you a heads up. You know, I don't want to see the panhandler get arrested. You I heartless go, libertarians. I just want to go away. You know, go bother people in a median or something like that. Don't be standing out in front of the grocery store. That's uh, it's gonna. That's something that's gonna drive customers away. And I figured yeah. I'd share that. What you need to do if you're gonna panhandle in front of a grocery store is you need young people for a cause, and, uh, and they're little <laughs> like the Girl Scouts. All right, we're out of town, for, or not out of town, we're out of time for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. Don't forget to check out Derek J at derekj.me, and we'll see you tomorrow. Are you? If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph two, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph three, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph four, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. 
Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 18th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.56 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,300 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $460. Antiwar.com reports, backing by escalating U.S. airstrikes, the Kurdish Peshmerga once again attacked the Mosul Dam, Iraq's largest hydroelectric dam, and has reportedly regained primary control over the heavily contested site. Kurdish media reported that the Peshmerga has control of most of the dam, with some officials putting the figure at 80% with the offensive continuing. It is likely that the dam will continue to be fought over as a hugely valuable asset for any side to control. The Peshmerga offensive began Saturday with a push against villages in the immediate vicinity and with U.S. airstrikes hitting ISIS targets in the area. They finally got a hold of the dam once more. Though Kurdish officials are touting the takeover as a major accomplishment, they had only lost the dam a little over a week ago to begin with, and it remains to be seen if they will actually be able to hold it when ISIS inevitably launches their own counter-counter-offensive. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Multiple sources report a curfew was in effect for the second consecutive night in Ferguson, Missouri. Saturday night into Sunday morning, several canisters of smoke and tear gas were used and seven people were arrested for failure to disperse after the curfew took effect. Captain Ron Johnson of the Missouri Highway Patrol said police were trying to give protesters every opportunity to comply with the curfew. On Sunday night, there were noticeably fewer police officers on a one-mile stretch of road where protesters had been gathering each night. There were even a few cars on the road which had been closed to traffic. Hundreds of people, some holding signs, paraded up and down the avenue. The peaceful nature of the protest changed around 9 p.m. when marchers began retreating as police trucks slowly moved down the street and smoke filled the road. Police said one person had been shot Sunday night and suffered minor wounds. Officers fired tear gas into a crowd of hundreds of protesters marching towards a police command post Sunday night. CNN's Steve Kastenbaum said,